Welcome to the latest edition of Both Her Rants, the, the, the stream where we go through the, all the latest political and LGBTQ news of interest at a canter. My name is Sophia Bota and I am <coughs> joined by my regular co-host, Ozma. You know, Ozma? Hi. Uh, yeah, I am here. I am definitely in this sort of corporeal form, which I managed to maintain somehow. <laughs> okay right so we've got a packed show tonight um let's get on with it right yes um Yay. prince philip has been released from hospital um oh uh i can't see the, oh, the thing oh yeah i keep forgetting to fucking do this don't i uh hold on Ugh. i mean I, I probably can see it on the, the show once it comes up on with a delay or but hey now um, okay, so Prince Philip has been released from hospital. But is he alive? Because <laughs> he looks like a fucking corpse stuffed on the back of a, the back seat of a car. Yeah, no, uh, he's looking almost worse. Than, well, no, he is looking worse than Donald Trump is at the moment. Uh, it, it is like a cross between a, a ghoul and a, and a, and a skeletal. Um yeah. Skeletor is far too interesting. Don't insult Skeletor by comparing. <laughs> I know some people are going to say, "Oh, you'll be be nasty to an old man." i will be nasty to an old racist tosser, who, um, you know, whose family are the biggest welfare sponges in the country. You know, the the Tories are always going on about, you know, how how it how how it is that you know the, the you know the poorest in society, the, the most vulnerable in society, to, to spend their welfare checks. On uh, uh, on cigarettes and, and alcohol and drugs. Well, you know the royal, ro you know the royals. You know um, what the fuck do they do for for you know for 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 for, for what you know their welfare check, huh? Um, uh, well, I mean, they, to, they were born in such a way that they were blessed with royalty by God. 
Um, you know, they, do you know, there probably are still people who fucking believe that. In fact, there was a teacher at, yeah. at the first primary school I went to here um, who did believe that, literally, that the, uh, the, the roles had blue blood. Anyways, you know, they, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the, here's the thing, right? Prince Philip would have got far better fucking um, health care than, you know, the vast majority of fucking old, uh, old people in this country. In fact, you know, I know full well that, you know, there would have been doctors um, who, who would have uh, treating, you know, any other person at the age of 99 who would have gone, oh, well, you know, is it really worth it? Yeah. 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 So, you know, fuck, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, yeah, I don't, you know, I'm not wishing him Ill, Ill will, but like, you know, um, the, the royals get, you know, well, the well, way too pampered, and I don't care if this pisses you off, Terry the Troll. Yes, Terry the Tory Troll, you know. Do you know, have I told you about Terry the Tory Troll? You the... have mentioned Terry the Tory Troll uh, uh, a few times on this show before. Yeah, um, the, the 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 guy in his sixties who stalked, uh, stalked, cyber stalked me around every fucking blog I ever wrote for, you know. Um, yeah, always, always a wonderful person be, through uh, cyber stalking and being an asshole to you for I mean, I mean, no the, good reason. The guy was a, supposedly it was a biz. I mean, his real name was Terence Godfrey, and he was a business owner up up in Boston, Lincolnshire. But you know, um, I mean. You have to be a pretty sad person to be stalking, you know, some, you know, nobody like me, for fuck's sake. Anyways, you know, it's not exactly I'm, 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 I'm of great. I mean, I'm not even of, of great and fucking importance, you know, in the trans community, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> you know, let let alone wider society. And you know, despite the fact that I think I've got something worthwhile to say, despite the fact that I go out and campaign for for stuff, you know. Um, unlike the fucking royals who sit around in fucking, you know, palace, you know, gilded fucking palaces and bounce around in fucking gold, uh, you know, horse-drawn fucking carriages. Anyways, you know? Well, or a bunch of black people carrying, uh, uh, a thing that the royals are sitting on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, there was a joke made about, you know, oh, yes, 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 we know that black lives matter, um... You know, they, they they're the ones who carry us around in in, in you know <laughs> you know in in in, in, in yeah in, no in racism chest. there yeah um anyways so talking of of of, of um uh, famous black people Yefa Koto died today oh um obviously was the Bond villain in Live and Let Die and it was in Alien which is one of my all time favorite films it was also in a, a Paul Schrader's first uh. Film. He's the guy who wrote the script for um, Taxi Driver, but uh, his oh. his fir the first film he directed was a film called Blue Collar, which which is a really good film. It's worth checking out about union corruption. Um, yeah, it st stars Richard Pryor doing a straight role. Um, anyways, um, the reason I bring Yafo Koto up is that Yafo was Jewish. Yes, that's right. You can be. Uh, you see, the thing is, according to uh, the uh, Joseph Cohen and the Israeli uh, uh, advocacy movement, you, you don't seem to be able to be black and be Jewish. Um, uh. Just ask Jackie Walker about that, um, who I've interviewed on this channel. Um, if you go and check out uh, that interview, um, unfortunately, my mic yeah. wasn't working properly in, in that interview, but we, you know, you can hear me. Um, it was a really good one of my. Actually, I think that possibly uh, is my favorite interview i've done so far because i really do get on with jackie um but yeah, yeah that's right you can be black and you can be jewish um unlike some racist fucking you know um uh, jewish zionists um who seem to think that you can't um uh you know yeah um, well i mean it's it's difficult um, you see darn it i uh, yeah no the the problem with uh, uh, saying something about some of these Israeli advocacy movements is I don't want to get uh, uh, or, or not Israeli various Israeli advocacy movements. Sorry, um, specifically the the hardcore Zionists. The problem is uh, if I compare any of their actions, no matter how close they are to certain horrible regimes in in Germany. Um, 
I can't because it's anti-Semitic. Well, uh, here's, here's uh, see if I can find, find, uh, find, unless it's been, t unless it, oh no, it hasn't been taken down. Here we are. Spot, Spotify's neo-Nazi problem. Now, he, I, I thought he was going to like go through various, you know, uh, pod, um, podcasts that might have been on, on, on Spotify. Um, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't surprise, with, with how many neo-Nazis on the internet, it wouldn't surprise me. It's However, no. What he does, he, he does bring up. He does bring up the 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 the, the, the neo Nazi problem in black metal, which we all know about. Um, yeah. Fair enough. Okay, I'd agree with him there. But then he goes on about. He said, "Oh, well, the the, the bigger the the, the the when it comes to music genres, the bigger the the the, the, the 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 genre which has the biggest problem of anti semitism is rap music." Hmm. No. You kind of think, hmm, no. why is he picking the on fun? rap? Rap? Why is Joseph picking on rap music? Is it because yeah. it's a predominantly a black, uh, black genre? Um, uh, you know, um, you know, it's 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 a genre of music which is predominantly black, uh, black of black artists. Um, yeah. yeah, the thing is, the guy's a fucking racist, right? And yet he he he, mo he bemoans. Um, you know, you know, anti-Semitism when when there is, you know, isn't anti-Semitism as there was with Jeremy Corbyn. Can I just repeat? Yeah. That? Yeah. For the umpteen fucking time. No, Jeremy Corbyn was not an anti-Semite. I wouldn't have stood next to him and had my picture taken with with Jeremy if I thought that he was. I wouldn't have supported him for all the years I I have if I thought he was anti-Semitic. Okay. Um. Yeah. It's it's the sort of thing similar to. Uh, Ilhan Omar, who just oh yeah, Joseph, Joseph, you, you can find a, a clip of them saying something uh, that can be taken um, worse out of context. I mean, despite the fact that there are several racist things that conservatives say that are pretty fucking racist, even in context. Yeah. Um. So. Um. Oh, well, I haven't watched this one yet. Exposing the uh, International Criminal Court's anti-Israeli uh, bias. Well, this is the one which you, I, I remember. Have I showed you? Yeah, you, were you on the show when I showed you the, the when Benjamin Netanyahu accused the International Criminal Court of being anti-Semitic because they're investigating him for war crimes? Uh, you might have. I know there's been... I know, I've um, covered covered it. You, you've covered the ICC before on this show, either episodes that I've watched or episodes that I've been on. Yeah. Because um, I do occasionally watch your show, too. Oh, thank you. That's, that's, that's I appreciate that. Um, well, I mean, you, um, you've seen me in chat before. I'm just yeah, like, yeah. I, I, and and you've asked. I'm just like, I'm. I don't have the spoons to actually be on, but I I enjoy your content. Yeah. Um. Oh, talking about the chat. Hi, Freya. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Black metal has a big yeah. um uh, and Nazi problem. Yeah, it 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 does. Um. That's that's for for, for 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 sure. Yeah. Um Fuck, I can't remember the artist that uh uh Freya's talking about. But um Yeah, um yeah. No, but just because look, just because just because um uh you're Jewish doesn't not mean that you're not capable of committing war crimes, okay? That's all I'm gonna yeah. say to that, you know? And Benjamin mentioned are you, even if he's not guilty of outright war crimes he is guilty of of human rights violations serious human rights violations and yeah in, well in, he in, saw what what happened in south africa and he thought hey that's a good idea yeah by the way do you know who uh part the the, the apartheid regime in south africa's biggest trading partner was no it's rough Oh. <laughs> Do you know who provided uh, uh, the uh, South Africa with the radioactive material to develop a nuclear weapon? Israel. Israel. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, Israel. Um, uh, we're welcome to have nuclear weapons for the purposes of um, uh, uh, what do you call it? I forgot the the strategic policy. Um, yeah. 
Anyways, this is a bit beside the point, but you know, yeah. we'll we'll come back to Joseph and, and his his merry band of Zionist bigots. I'm sure in 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 the, in the future. And believe me, these guys are bigots. Um, right, yes, Julie Birchill. Um, she Asaka uh, has managed to. Uh, she she basically. Uh, um, well, as you can see, writer of uh, uh, and columnist Julie Birchall has has issued a 600-word unreserved apology and agreed to pay substantial damage uh, damages for a two-week campaign of abuse against journalist Ash Sarkar. Yeah, it was racist abuse as well. Um, so Julie Birchall, as well as being a turf, is also a racist piece of shit. Um, and Ash Sarkar is awesome. The far right absolutely despise Asaka, along with Diane Abbott. Why? Because they're women of colour who are, you know, speak up for themselves and are very articulate and, and highly intelligent in what they say. Oh no! Oh Co no! Can't people be having that. People of colour who are who are uh, can outsmart people. Yeah. I mean, that reminds me of something else, but it's unrelated. So I'm not going to mention it. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, fuck Julie Birchill. Uh, uh, you know, um, as far as I'm concerned, she's she, she, she's awful. Um, right. Yes, I've been me I, I've been meaning to cover this for, for, for ages. Um, uh, so, as as people will remember, uh, Kira Bell and one other unnamed person uh, won a court case against the Tavistock Clinic. Tavistock is yeah. the only clinic in in Britain which treats trans youth. Um, and, well, because of that court case, uh, trans youth are now not getting treated. Um, and Kira Bell, yeah. it, uh, can I just say, is a turfy, um, um, poisonous minx. That's what she is. Um, and, yeah. um, you know, here's the thing with a lot of D-trans... D-trans... You see, I was prepared... I was prepared to give them the benefit of the doubt, and I remember you watched that uh, stream I did with Kevin Logan where we covered this. And the more that interview they gave on Newsnight went on, the more it was obvious to both me and Kevin that they that they had been fed bullshit by turfs. To, yeah, yeah. Um, and they, they they just refused to take any fucking responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Look. Uh, Look, they know what's best for you, and therefore they should shove their uh, reasoning down your throat until you simply accept whatever they say as true, regardless of any facts or harm done. Well, the, 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 the thing of it, I don't have any problem with anyone who detransitions, because look... Yeah. You know, this isn't all, you know, it's not all, you know, people have gender dysphoria in different degrees, um, or they might might have been con confused. I, I get all that, right? I have no problem with the transitioners, right? As far as I'm concerned, yeah. you know, you need to find, you know, where you're happiest, okay? Um, but to say that, you know, people are being brainwashed into transitioning is utter bullshit. You yeah. and I both know that that's, that's ap crap. Most trans yeah. people would have strongly advise people to think very carefully before they transition. And I've I have a rule: I will not help anybody, right, uh, any trans person, unless they have made the decision to transition. I won't I won't I won't advise them beforehand, right? They have to make that decision for themselves. Okay. Yeah, and and there's so much a society is very much but the problem, anti trans. The, the problem with the problem with with the some D transition, and I was before I go on, I should point out less than two percent of of people who transition regret it, okay, yeah. and detransition, okay. Less and than, some of that is, than, is so potentially Kira Bell's, from societal. Kira Bell's Kira Bell's Kira Bell's experience is actually in the very small minority, okay. Yes. Yet, because because of you know. The, the, you know they want to blame everyone else you know uh you know people who genuinely need need treatment for gender dysphoria are missing out and yep. okay so trans youth are are internal uh, internalizing 
uh, a message that the world hates them. Yeah, uh, as a result of the High Court uh, puberty blockers decision uh, in the Bell versus Tavistock uh, case last year. According to the CEO of leading uh, tra uh, leading trans charity, I wonder if this is mermaids, um, the High Court ruled in December 2020 that transgender under 16s would have to be uh, would would have to be able to understand the nature of hormone replacement therapy and gender affirming surgery in order to be prescribed puberty blocking medication. Right. Okay. One of the problems I have with that, right, is sometimes, right, people need some sort of like time to sort of figure things out. And the whole point of puberty blockers is it gives people the time to figure that out with therapy and, and yeah. <coughs> whatever else, right? I mean, and, and, and also, like, um, uh, since, at the very least, since the DSM-3, there's been, uh, and, and probably before that, um, uh, but it's very well documented since uh, at least the 70s children being trans who turn out to need, you know, uh, hormone replacement therapy. The, the, rule, the rule called that it was highly unlikely under 13s would be competent to give consent and said it was doubtful children uh, aged 14 and 15 uh, would be able to understand the long-term risks and consequences. You see, here's the thing. I, I knew when I was four, right? I, I knew when I was four. Yeah. I first told somebody... I didn't tell them until I was... Tw uh, I told tell someone on, until I was 11 that I was trans, right? Um, and I was laughed at. And I was considered disturbed and sent to various psychotherapists who all told me I was disturbed. And then when I did, you know... You know, start to think about transitioning. People, you know, I was in, I was first, I was in my twenties at the time, right? And people go, well, you need to yeah. think about this very carefully. Bloody, 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 blah. Like I haven't, you know. You don't just fall out of bed one day and decide you're trans. It doesn't work like that, okay? Yeah. There's a lot of fucking, you know, pain and trauma, right? And my adolescence was severely fucked up. Because I couldn't even socially transition back then. Yep. Um, the judicial re uh, review was brought by yeah, Kira Bell, uh, 23, who, who um, took puberty blockers age 16 and later regretted that decision. Fine, okay, they, they regretted that decision. And, you know, um, um, you know uh, I'm sorry that they did. And Miss A, a mother of, uh, who wanted to uh, prevent her trans teenager from taking puberty blockers. The ruling means that... Well, here's the question I have about that one. Is it because their mother is a transphobe? Yeah. You see, that's the question I have. Right? Um, yeah, yeah, because they're, they're, a lot they're, of times I won't it, mention, it comes uh, to, depending on who is... Uh, uh, Framing the case, you can find out who, who you know. You, you hear from transphobes, oh, oh, we let them, you know, play what they want, what? but they seem to only wear uh, these clothes during when they're here. Well, yeah, and then you find out later, oh, it's because you got rid of all the clothes of the other gender, so they didn't really have a choice. Well, um, I was going to say there, there's there, there's a turf. I won't mention a name who is a turf because their their kid told them they were trans and they did all they could to prevent them from uh transitioning well as far as i'm concerned that's a form of child abuse because you're not allowing yeah. your kid to be the themselves right um so you, you know that's i that's the question i have about that the ruling means that trans under 16s in england and wales cannot be prescribe puberty blockers without uh, the, the approval of a court. Yeah, because judges really know, um, you know, uh, you know, real, real experts on the treatment of, of trans youth, aren't they? You know, um, not. Uh, speaking at an academic <coughs> conference on medical and legal consequences uh, of the ruling uh, on Wednesday, the 3rd of March, Dr. Jay Stewart, CEO and co-founder of trans charity uh, gender intelligence said the decision is already having 
an impact on the mental well-being of trans youth. No shit. Yep. Um, you know, and Kirabel doesn't give Cause, a cause and, each, and, and each doesn't. block you put in and, the way. And Kirabel, Kirabel doesn't give a shit because they're now part of the Trump, turf fucking, you know, um, uh, club. Um, yep. And turfs, you know, they just want to wipe us from fucking existence. Young trans people who worked uh, with gender intelligence have sp spoken about the lack of, uh, of control over their lives as a result of the judgment, Stuart said. Um, young people uh, have described it as offensive, but they do not have appropriate autonomy over their body, uh, bodies and their choices. Yeah, um, exactly. You own your own fucking body. Um, yeah. You know, property, uh, property rights 101. Um, he added, uh, you, you, we've got a situation where there are more st um, strangers, not less, making... Uh, where there are more strangers, not less, making decisions about what's in the best interest of young person. Yeah, you see, here's the thing, right? Um... You've got all these people who seem to think, you know, I, I, I mean, like, I've had neighbours, right? I, they have coffee mornings. And uh, I remember overhearing them one time, and they were going, you know, the, 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 you know, shouldn't be teaching young people LGBT stuff, you know? And I sort of went to them, do you know what age I, I knew I was LGBTQ? Yeah, when I was four, right? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you know? <coughs> and they seem to think they're fucking experts. No, you're fucking not. You know, fuck all. What you do is you read fucking headlines in the Daily Mail and the Telegraph, right? Who are transphobic as fuck because they don't want people to, to, to be themselves. They don't want people to be liberated. They don't want people to be emancipated. They want to control people. They're in favour of the Tory fucking police state. You know, we've all yeah. got to be conform conformist fucking obedient consumers. Yeah. You know, as uh, you know, here's here's the thing, right? So, you know, t today they're going to be taking a vote on the fucking police bill, right? And you know, here's here's the thing. Pe you know, I, I you know, I've said it. People are going to miss liberty when they no longer have it. But then again, of course, as a friend of mine pointed out, no, nah, they'll just go fucking shopping and I won't give a shit. That's a that's the thing. People are fucking stupid, and I'm fucking fed up with it. My life being dogged by fucking stupid people. Yeah, and, there's, and, and there's, a, a lot of times it's, oh, it doesn't affect me, and therefore it must not be a real issue. Yeah, and there's a fear that wishes and, and needs of young uh, uh, person are not being uh, put front and centre. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, of course, of course, Turfs go, oh, yeah, we do care about the children, you know, because you, you, you keep hearing this, and we'll hear this later in the video. What about the yeah. children? Well, have you actually asked? They care them? about the parents. No, well, have you actually asked? Have any of these turf motherfuckers ever asked a trans child? Have they? Have they ever spoken? Well, no. To them? They've spoken to turfs who have abandoned trans children. The interest of, of young a young person, and there's there's a fear that the wishes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gender intelligence has been working uh, with trans youth to help them uh, um, feel that. They do not ha uh, uh, they they do do have, have some an element of control element. over their lives. Um, uh, I think there needs to be an acknowledgement that the medical legal system could be causing harm with some decisions that they, uh, have happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's for fucking sure. Um, he warned that um, there is a real risk trans youth will internalise uh, a harmful message sent um, by the High Court ruling. Our young people yeah. have described how the judgment has made them feel that the world hates them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not just that. You just have to switch on the fucking television or open up a fucking newspaper, you know? And, uh, you know, any trans story is, is anti trans. And the danger is that the message could get internalized there's something wrong with me and I deserve to be punished. Yeah. yeah, that is. You know. I have that internalized still. Yeah. Um. You, well, th th this is the thing. I'll know if you remember I mentioned Terry the troll, right? I remember when I transitioned, right? He said, he 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 started on at me. He said, you know, the, 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 one of the first experts on on trans, uh, the treated trans people, actually said we should prevent people from coming out as trans. I went, no, they didn't. Yeah. 
Um, that's bullshit. Yeah, this is this is this is a conservative way. We should prevent people from from, from you know um, to, you know living harmful lifestyles. It's not a fucking lifestyle. You're born trans. End yeah, of. and it's not and a lifestyle choice. This is not a choice for even me or yeah. Osma. Right. Yeah, and and by the way, just to be clear about the internalized hating, it's more so for ableist reasons because there's crossover with uh, a lot of stuff, and and with every psychological thing with me, it's it's a lot easier to feel uh, for me to feel broken. People uh, needs uh, people needs to unpack why society is so unwilling to grant trans people the autonomy to make their own decisions. I've always had a theory, right? A lot of people are really repressed, right? And they're trapped in their, you know, bullshit lives, okay? And they don't like it when someone says, nah, fuck this, right? I'm going to be myself. They don't like that. They don't like the fact that, you know, people people have the courage to be themselves. When they're dying to be themselves. You know, it's basically sour grapes or I uh, think the other... Uh, I think someone once said it was tall poppy syndrome. I think that's a, a, a term. You know, Stuart said he argued that there is nothing uh, to, to fear by granting trans people the right to explore their identities. No, there isn't. Um, uh, Stuart uh, ha, uh, was joined by the University of uh, Bristol. Uh, sorry, was joined at the University uh, University of Bristol conference by a number of, of uh, other academics who discussed the legal and me medical implications of the judgment. Uh, Ruth Fletcher, a senior lecturer in medical law at Queen's Mary College of of, of London, uh, outlined five ways uh, in which the High Court's judgment uh, in Bell. Uh, the uh, Tavistock is problematic. She said that the judgment pushes in a direction that um, goes against or troubles at least the directions or, or in medical law or the fact, yeah. you know, or what, you know, medical experts say. Okay. Yeah. And, and obviously there's the, the opening for well, you... uh, preventing um, uh, uh, abortions, teen abortions. Well, this, this this government keeps telling us that when it comes to COVID nineteen, we we you know we're being led by the science. Well, how about being led by the fucking medical science when it comes to treating trans people, huh? Yeah, uh, around uh, young people's competence uh, to consent to medical intervention, she criticised the judgment uh, for generalising um, about um, young people's ability to consent. Normally, we're uh, we're a person specific and do not uh, do not take more. Of a child's rights approach, uh, with uh, which thinks I do take more of a child's rights approach. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm I'm losing it, folks. Um, but you get the uh, you get the general yeah. you get the general drift. Um, uh, let's see if there's anything else. Uh, it has uh, been suggested that puberty blocker. Oh, oh, go on. Oh, no, I was re uh, go down a little bit more. Uh, it's been suggested that puberty blockers are experimental because they've not gone through randomized control trials where some patients are given actual treatment where others are given placebo. That's, uh, that argue that's not what? Puberty blockers have been tested forever. Sorry, that was... I thought it was someone who was going to say something positive. I didn't... Uh, Right, yeah. now here's some good news. Amazon bans uh, books uh, that lie about LGBT plus people being mentally ill. Sorry about it, bigots. <laughs> I like that headline. Amazon has said that it will no longer sell books that uh, frame LGBT plus identities as a mental illness, responding to a, a row over an anti-trans book. Hey. And I should point out yeah. that um, obviously Jeff Bezos is, is, is no longer CEO of, of, of uh, Amazon, but I'd imagine he still has a say in the runnings of things. Um, he's always been. Yeah, a big but I mean, also they, hold, hold they on, want... hold on, hold on. I haven't finished. Oh, he's always been a big supporter of LGBT plus campaigns. Gotcha. Um, the online retail giant explained its decision 
after Republicans complained that oh god they're going to complain council culture are they here? Yeah? Uh, complained in oh, a, three, a three a three year old uh, uh, anti trans book uh, was removed uh, from Amazon website and its Kindle and Audible uh, platforms. Um, Republican. Well, here's the thing, right? Well, you know, set up your own fucking bookshop. If you want to sell anti trans books, fine. You know, uh, you know, set up set up your own online b bookstore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Republican senators uh, Marco Rubio. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's a surprise. Uh, Mike Lee, uh, uh, Mike Braun, uh, and Josh Howley uh, um, uh, wrote to Amazon chief executive. I thought Bezos had left. Um, it was last month that they wrote. So, oh, right, okay. um, what last month he was still uh, yeah. executive. So why the the, the book when Harry. Uh, became S Sally responding to the transgender moment was was uh, the transgender moment yeah no uh, oh, right. the, it's the a fad it's years. a trend it's a moment yeah. it, no yeah, it's fucking it's a, not it's a thousand some it's a thousands of years moment you know those quick moments look you know if you look at the history of the the planet earth you know, it's like what four or five billion years uh however many years it is i forget and so it's just a blip you know humanity so it's just a moment <laughs> there have been trans people through the fucking centuries okay um, yeah it's not a fucking moment um was not available for any uh platforms uh the company responded uh, to the senator's letter on thursday 11th of March, saying Amazon would no longer be selling books that uh, cl claimed being LGBT plus was uh, a mental illness. According to the Wall Street Journal, the letter was signed by Brian Huseman, Amazon's vice president of, of public policy. The letter stated as, uh, as, to, uh, as to your specific question about when Harry became Sally, we have chosen not to sell uh, to, we There's have chosen not to tell books that frame LGBTQ plus identity there. as a, a uh, mental a illness. A density, that might be a typo. Yeah. Uh, identity as a mental, mental illness. Amazon said, Amazon said it provides its customers with access to a variety of viewpoints, including books that some customers may find objectionable. Um, the only other time I remember, I think Amazon withdrew think they would do hold on let me let me just check i think they would do tommy robinson's book um i'm not sure um, uh, hold on let me have a look i think they might have done um uh which book is that i don't know what it was but i oh was it, or it was either it was either it was either his I, book or his merchandise hold on uh no, it's still available. So why did I hear that it wasn't? Oh, uh, well, sometimes stuff shows oh, up. Oh, hold on, no, that's no, 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 sorry, 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 got got it, got that, got that wrong. Uh, hold on, uh, let me have a deeper dive. Uh, yeah, here we are. Yeah, they did. Uh, it refuses to stop selling. Oh. Tommy Mer Robinson merchandise. Yeah, so they continues to sell the merchandise. So Amazon isn't stopping Tommy Robinson merchandise. Yeah, uh, so you know they're prepared to, and you know for those in America who don't know who Tommy Robinson is, he's a far right thug. Okay, he's been he's he's been to prison and shit. You know for being you know um, a violent thug and a fraudster and various other things. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, Amazon is still prepared to sell Tommy Robinson merchandise, you know. Um, yet, you know, so this isn't all good, you know. Yeah. I know some people say, "Do you think that Amazon should sell Mind Camp?" Uh, yes, I do think they should sell Mind Camp. I think that people. Uh, should... Amazon, Amazon doesn't need to. Um. So the thing is, they're libraries, and libraries you can get Mein Kampf at 
most libraries. You don't need to. No, but I actually think people should. Amazon should, should selling people, it. I, I'm serious here when I say people should read it, because. Yeah, I know that's that's what libraries are for. Oh, I get. Oh, I get your point. Don't buy it. You know. Yeah, to, yeah. Uh, rent it from the the library. You don't need to go and own a copy to put on the wall as your nice metal. No. Uh, uh, and and Amazon doesn't need to sell it. Target doesn't need to sell it. I mean, they're bookstores. They're not... Yeah, but I actually, think, they're not there. I, I actually think that people should read it. Know thy yeah, enemy. Uh, 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 reading it and being uh, aware of it are, like I said, different things that, than owning it. And I don't think sh stores should be forced to to sell uh, a book like Mein Kampf for um, the uh, uh, protocols of the Elders of Zion or anything like that. Um, obviously, this is going to be another thing which the fucking uh, Republicans in the far right are going to go, is this council culture? Well, you know, do Waterstone still sell it? I don't know. Um, as I said... If you're so unhappy about that, you know, Amazon not selling book, books, you know, hating on, on LGBT plus people, then fine. Set up your own homophobic fucking bookstore. I mean, yeah, and, like, it's not like you can't find other books. Irreversible damage, the transgender cra craze seducing our daughters, is still being sold on Amazon. Right, so Amazon on... Eh, eh, yeah. <clears throat> it's you know uh i mean uh uh target got complaints and i think uh target um uh took it down and and stopped selling it at the very least temporarily right okay i'm gonna uh so this is another article which has been in my bookmarks for a, um a few uh, about a month. <laughs> uh, questions of language uh, are deeply uh, so. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> why should uh, wh why you should always use transgender instead of transgendered? Um, uh, uh, questions of language are deeply uh, ingrained in the fight for, for transgender right rights and equality. It's not uh, just a matter of being polite. If someone calls a trans woman, sorry, a trans man, a woman, it fundamentally cuts against the person's gender gender identity. But there are still big barriers, even among traditional liberal uh, media outlets, uh, towards getting the, the basics of trans inclusive vocabulary right. A recent story in the New Republic referred to trans people as transgendered, trans men and trans women, all of which are offensive to many pe uh, trans people. Uh, BuzzFeed uh, LGBT uh, e editor uh, Sarah Jones echoed some of the offensive uh, offence in a recent tw tweet. Also, uh, this is the tweet, also it's transgendered, not transgendered. Transgendered is a lewis uh, uh, transgendered is the linguistic equivalent of describing someone as blacked. Yeah. Uh, getting, getting this right isn't just uh, a matter of, uh, the other, the, the other, okay. So basically, uh, this is a, uh, quite a long article. All them transgendered folks over well, well, there. Well, no, the other one which we'll get to with the video <laughs> we're going to be responding to. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> is transgenders. That's the other one. Oh yeah, I'm sure that's used a a, a lot. Um, uh, it's because it's because you can say that. Uh, yeah, it, it, you can say that some you don't say that someone's transgender if you're using that terminology. You're just like that person's been transgendered by the gender. I don't know why I'm doing it in like a weird southern accent. I just well, yeah, but those are typical people who, who yeah, <laughs> yeah, get get you right now. As New York Times editor uh, Margaret Sullivan explained last week, one of the major challenges for news outlets is 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 that most readers just aren't familiar with how 
to correctly uh, refer to people uh, with non-traditional gender identities. And in some cases, referring to someone with the correct terms can be a uh, little confusing. Well, they're going to have to learn because we ain't going, you know, we're here to stay, you know. Uh, calling uh, yeah. Chelsea Manning a transgender soldier uh, who's in prison for leaking secret uh, US documents, she, after years of addressing her in the news uh, stories as he, may uh, have confused some readers. You see, the thing is, now I'm okay. I know I'm trans, right? But it's not, it's not fucking rocket science, is it? It's not. I don't understand how people can be that. You know, you have to be pretty dim. Uh, okay, most people probably are. Um, yeah. Well, I'm I mean, saying, uh, I just see. I don't want to have to say that, but the trouble is, you know, I I just think of my own experiences and. Generally, what I see around well, it, uh, it, uh, it depends on people's um, willingness to learn. That's what it is largely uh, uh, when it comes to things. People want. There are people out there who have been culturally told that uh, this is how they should think about something, and so they don't want to learn it. They want. It's almost like they want it to be uh, demanded to them. That this is the the world as it is, and it's yeah. it's not so simple. Um, of course, there are ways around this. A writer could explain what terms mean within uh, a story. News outlets could link readers to clear definitions, similar to what BuzzFeed does with it, with its in-house uh, style guide. Stories uh, could also point readers to more in-depth uh, glossaries like the GLAAD uh, Media um, Reference Guide or UC Berkeley's Gender Equality Resource Center's definition uh, of terms. More yeah. importantly, media outlets have... Uh, well, let's be honest, some media outlets just don't give a shit like Fox News. Um, I mean, I think... Yeah. They, 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 uh, so I think they still have... They still have pundits on Fox News who will refer to Chelsea Manning as Bradley. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Tucker Carlson did, especially given how much the the uh, neo Nazis and and right wing people like to uh, far right people in, in America like to take notes from the way Tucker Carlson frames arguments. Um. The umbrella term for, for people who identify with uh, gender uh, different uh, with a with a gender different than the one assigned to them at birth is transgender or trans. I prefer trans. However, there are some people such as Caroline Cosy and uh, India Willoughby. Oh, actually, no, India. India's tr India's trying to po has trying to be passing herself off as cis. It's kind of embarrassing. Yet she's always seemed to be commenting on trans stuff. So you know, if she if she's trying to pass herself off as cis, um, why is she still commenting on trans stuff? Um, but there are Caroline Cossey is, is one comes to mind. They don't like the term transgender. They refer to themselves as transsexual still, right? Yeah, uh, because they don't. They, they, and they, I, I they, just they, refer they, they to myself it, as they, a trans with a plan. They, but... they, well, no, because they, 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 they say all oh, the the transgender umbrella is too, it's too broad, and you know I've got nothing to, I've got nothing in common with non-binary people. Well, you do actually, because non-binary yeah. people identify as a gender other than the one they were identified as at as birth. So, um, you know. Yeah, and and if I end up, and the thing is, even for instance, even if I was. Uh, binary trans and just not gender conforming I would have problems with a, a lot of the just just being able to get hormones and there's that crossover with uh, individuals who are non-binary um, getting hormones is always harder yeah these these words are adjectives not nouns additionally the word transgendered is offensive to trans people and unnecessarily confusing um, as trans advocate Joanna Herman uh, noted in the Huffington Post, calling someone transgendered is a bit like calling someone coloured. Uh, one uh, problem with, with the label was that it 
uh, implied something happened to to make that person, uh, you know, of colour, which denied yeah. the person's dignity of being uh, born that way. Uh, Herman wrote similarly. Transgender suggests that uh, that being trans is something that happens to someone, as opposed to identifying someone uh, is born with. Yeah, that's true. Implication be, uh, behind transgender uh, um, flies in the face of, of science. People yeah, can know that. Yeah, it's never been a scientific that, term. Uh, people, people can. Yeah, the, the well, the science. Well, the medical science definition is gender dysphoria. Um, uh, can well, yeah. All right, it's just where it gets a bit confusing to, to for some people. Uh, not every transgender person is gender dysphoric, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, the well, the it depends how you and it, that's it. and and that depends on how you define gender dysphoria. If you define it according to the Benjamin scale, yes, every transgender person is gender dysphoric to some degree, right? However, there are some trans people, such as Vera Wild, who don't who say they they, they don't have gender dysphoria. Yeah. Um, so, you know. Um, well, I mean, it, it's a symptom. You're you are describing your own uh, uh, personal life experience. Whether you de describe the bad things as dysphoric or the good things as euphoric, or or any combination of the two, the important thing is less so that description and more so what you can do to give people a happier, more comfortable life. A recent study from the Trans Youth Project found that transgender children as young as five years old respond to uh, psychological gender association tests which uh, evaluate the, the, how people uh, view themselves with gender roles as quickly and consistently as those who don't identify as, as trans. Interesting that, isn't it? Yeah, and that's not like the you, last, you almost the... don't need a recent study for that. There have been studies that have been saying that for uh, like the past hundred years, practically. Yeah, uh, transgender is uh, transgendered is also necessarily long and confusing. LGBT group uh, Glad uh, explained the objective transgender should should. Adjective, sorry, transgender. Uh, the the adjective transgender should never have an extraneous ad tacked onto the end. An ad suffix adds unnecessary length to the word and can cause tense confusion and grammatical errors. It also brings transgender into alignment with lesbian, gay, and bisexual. You would not say that Elton John is gay or that Ellen DeGeneres is lesbian, therefore you not say Chaz Bono is transgendered. Now, that being said, it would be fun to say that Ellen DeGeneres has been lesbian. <laughs> <clears throat> trans men and trans women versus trans men and trans women. Oh, um, it's the, the space. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've always used the space. Um, uh, I have not always used a space. I had to uh, learn to make sure to use the space. Um, that was a, a problem um, with me. But, you know, I, I tend to, well, at the very least, I try to listen to people. Right. Trans, trans man is someone who identifies as a man, but has designate, uh, was designated female at birth. A trans woman is someone who identifies as a woman. But was designated male at birth. Sorry, I've read that wrong, haven't I? No. All right. Okay. Um, it's like, I mean, so, designated, so, assigned. No, I think I said ma I said male instead of female. All right, let me read that again. A trans man is someone who identifies as a man, but was designated female at birth. A trans woman is someone who identifies as a woman, but was designated male at birth. Some trans people prefer to to have. The, the word transgender or trans uh, out uh, out altogether, since they only identify as man or woman. I kind of... I remember years ago, I don't know if it's still around, but there used to be a blog called 
uh, women born uh, women born transsexual. Okay, so so how long ago that was, and um, yeah, I kind of say, look, you know, you have cis women and you have trans women, right? And you have non-binary women. What's wrong with that? You know, um, yeah. that's how I, you know, um, uh, writers you uh, writers shouldn't use trans men without a, trans men without a space or trans women without a space. The word trans is an adjective that helps describe someone's gender identity, and it should be treated like other adjectives. Can you? Uh, sure. Merging the adjective and the noun risks suggesting that, tran that a trans man or woman is more or less than just a man or just a woman, which goes against how many trans people identify themselves. Right. So an interesting article that. Um, <laughs> yeah. And and it's 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 um, it, it, you know it's supportive of of of, of trans people. Um, I I will say one thing. More sites need to use the the uh, text to speech have a text to speech thing. That's just useful uh, for so many. Sorry, um, disability advocacy is also something I care about. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, to, to explain to people, I have dyslexia, but it's a bit weird. I can, when I, when I read, like, in private, and I don't have to speak out, I'm fine, right? It's when I have to, you know, speak. I mean, I do actually have a, I do have a speech-to-text right, uh, reader here, actually. But the problem is, well, let me show you, what, you know, um, I don't know if it'll work. You see, it doesn't always work. Um, yeah. Oh, let's, okay. The priorities and the outlook of a presidency is typically marked by what the administration accomplishes in its first 100 days. As we are halfway to that mark, it appears President Joe Biden, D, and Vice President yeah, Kamala Harris, D, has prioritized stopped. LGBTQ rights. LGBTQ media advocates glad... Right, I should explain what this is, first of all. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. The Biden-Harris administration delivers uh, 24 uh, pro-LGBTQ uh, uh, actions in, in the first 50 days. I'll say this. Yeah. When it comes to LGBT, the, the Biden-Harris administration has, you know, thumbs up from me when it comes to the work they've done with, um, uh, you know, uh, LGBTQ issues. Yeah. Yeah. They've, they've got a thumbs up for me from that, a thumbs down on some other issues. But yeah, like the fact that. That, that that children are still being locked up in cages. On, on yeah, you know. the I, ICE is still a horrendous, horrible problem. Yeah. All right. LGBTQ media advocates GLAD launched the Biden Equality Accountability Tracker beat on March 11th, the 50th day of the Biden Harris administration. They determined that 24 actions were taken from the White House that affect LGBTQ people and rights. Related, White House warns states that their anti-transgender bills See, are illegal. See, that's the problem with it. In a statement, GLAD President yeah. and CEO Sarah Kate Ellis said, GLAAD's Biden Equality Accountability Tracker is an ongoing resource tool to track how well the Biden administration is keeping to its word to make progress for the LGBTQ community. Huh? Well, go on in. What? Nah. You see, this is the problem with it. Uh, nah, she's tired. She's tired anyways, of reading. Anyways, this story, basically, Biden and, and Harris, so far, you know, I think the LGBT, uh, all of us in the LGBTQ community are pleased with what they've done. Okay? Yeah. Um, They might not get, they're not likely to get the Equality Act through the Senate, unfortunately. Um, um, due to the fact that you know there aren't enough Republicans who are prepared to flip, uh, prepared to support it. Um, yeah, but well, you have Republicans who have already forgotten the uh, how bad the Capitol riots were and are willing to, you know, promote uh, various legal action that puts them at risk again. Right. So. Just, 
Yes, Milo. Oh, God. He's now claiming that he's ex-gay. Yep. Um, of course he is. Um, so, self-titled pop star of hate. Milo, you know, I can't pronounce that. I mean, he's, he's got an accurate description. He knows how to promote himself. Now describes himself as ex-gay and sodomy free as he attempts to return to the public eye via the religious right. It's funny, actually, because I was speaking to Kevin about this a few weeks back. Kevin Logan, please go and subscribe to his channel. Um, uh, and I'll be, on his, I'll be on his channel on Thursday um, talking about trans stuff. Um, anyways, uh, good plug there. Um... Uh, the uh, 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 I was talking to him about Sargon of Akkad. The first time I came across Sargon of Akkad, he was, you know, militantly atheistic. But he was taking the God pill. And so, a lot of these sort of, you know, these people who were on YouTube, you know, 10, 15 years ago, who were battling Christian fundamentalists, you know, as soon as the sort of like the, you know, the, the you know, Christian fundamentalists, basically realised they'd lost the fucking argument. Um the a lot that there was a split in, in the atheistic community. You know, you had you had people like Steve Shives and, and Dusty Smith, um not straight off with Dusty, I, I should add, but you know, Dusty is, is has come round to, to being, you know, a very thoughtful and progressive kind of guy, um, along with Steve Shives. But then you had people like T J Kirk and Sargon of a car who were basically bullies and they needed to find yeah. other you know uh, uh, other groups to, to bully and so well you know we had the whole social justice warrior bullshit and through all that you know the lurch to the right so some I don't know about t what's happening with TJ Kirk but I know that Sargon has taken the god pill and, and others have as well um, I we, wonder how long it will be before uh, rationality rules takes the cut, though. Well, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's like at the time when, <laughs> when like, um, Kevin Logan had Sargon on, um, they were uh, basically having, having a, doing it, doing a stream together, and um, it was when Sargon um, joined UKIP, and uh, Kevin goes. Oh, you're you're very pro science, aren't you, Sargon? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, so what? So, so what do you think about, you know, uh, you know, UKIP's anti science views on on climate change? See what I'm saying? These these people yeah. were always far far right douches, right? Um, they just seemed they you know when we had all the the issues with Christian fundamentalism uh, around the time of George W. Bush's uh, you know presidency. You know, they seem to be the good guys at the time, but no, but but now, you know, that they're, they're they're grifters. They need to appeal to the far, you know, to, you know, they see you know dollar signs with the with the far right. So basically, yeah. they pander to the far right, and as I said, a lot of them have taken the god pill. Um, you know, uh, Stefan Molyneux is another one who has, hasn't he? Uh, you know, um, I mean, I never liked Stefan Molyneux anyways. He was always a misogynistic asshole. Well, so has Sargon. Um, Anyways, yeah. the the alt right uh, troll uh, confessed. Uh, you see, that's what it is. he is. He's a troll. That's yeah. it. That's what uh, you know. Milo, I, I can't pronounce his surname. Um, uh, Milo uh, Yakinopoulos. Yeah. Um, the alt right troll confessed to to, to his sins uh, of of flesh in an interview with Christian outlet Lifestyle <laughs> Lifesite News. Uh, revealing that he has now dedicated his life to St. Joseph and will be leading <laughs> uh, a daily... Uh, con Consecration to the con saint online? Yeah. Um, God, this, I, is, this is fucking cringe. Um, I mean, this is, this is getting sad. This is like one of those sad actors who you're like, yeah, you maybe liked some one tiny thing that they did years and years and years and years ago, but now they're like, you know, going in Christian fundamentalist movies. Yeah, 
characteristically uh, char characteristically flippant throughout uh, Yekonopoulos uh, compared his homosexual degeneracy to an addiction and claimed uh, he'd only learned uh, it uh, uh, to troll. Uh, he only uh, leaned uh, into uh, it to troll liberals. He, oh my God! He was like, you know what? I'm going to be I'm an old. Be gay to the, own the libs. <laughs> this is a new one. This is a new policy that I think more conservatives should uh, uh, take up. Become gay to own the libs. When when I used to be uh, to to when I used to to kid that I I only became gay to torment my mother I I won't entirely I wasn't entirely joking, uh, of course I was I was never wholly at home with the gay lifestyle. Well, it wasn't the gay lifestyle. You see, yeah, he's taking the god pill. You know that's that's you know that 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 euphemism the gay lifestyle is is what. You know, well, it's the same thing as the the transgender lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, which we'll be getting on to in well, uh, a little bit. Um, uh, who who could uh, who could be and learnt heavily into public uh, uh, and only leaned heavily into it in public because it drove liberals crazy to see a handsome, charismatic, intelligent gay man riotously celebrating conservative principles now i disagree i actually do you know two what? of those fronts i i i i'm playing on share psychologist here but i've always thought milo has a personality disorder there Sorry, was always, what? Well, see, he has a personality disorder yeah, oh yeah you know, um, I, I i remember there, yeah, were like, there, there was always that kid at school who just needed to to, to be troll other kids for attention right because there was something lacking for them and, you know, that's the same with Milo. It really is. Okay? Yeah. Um, I, I was just going to say, I can I consider him has, handsome, but I don't consider him charismatic or intelligent. Um, uh, that's not to say I, I didn't throw myself enthusiastically into degeneracy of all kinds in, in my private life. I suppose I, I feel that um, that's all I deserved. I'd love to say it, it you know, degeneracy. The thing is, I don't think Milo is in ca is capable of actually loving anybody. Right? I just Harsh, don't. Well, he's but, yeah, he's it, a narcissist. Uh, but but possibly true. I'd love to say it was 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 all an act, and I've been straight uh, this this whole time. But when I don't don't have the the, the kind of commitment to. I don't have the kind of commitment to perform performance art. Art, talk about method acting. Um, Yekonopoulos, who was uh, raised Catholic, and previously uh, said he would cure his sexuality if he could, claimed that's uh, true. Claimed his husband has been demoted to housemate. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> Oh, I didn't realize he was married. Oh my god, that's, that's he was married, hilarious. Hey. Nothing has changed. They're still fucking. He is just like flat out trying to grift uh, Christians. Yes. This is not, see, this is, it's hard not to on some level respect that, because that's just. I'm sorry, uh, that's just funny to me. I'm... And he, he embraces his, his new heterosexual lifestyle. Yeah, no, there's, feels... no, there's no heterosexuality going on there. If, I'm wondering if Milo is now actually trolling the far right with this whole Christian. Oh, thing. no, I, it wouldn't surprise me. He's, uh, he's, he's a grifter at his very core. Yeah. He um, will grift whoever will give him. I mean, money. If, he, if he wants, if he wants to tro tro troll far right Christian fundamentalists, go right ahead. As far as I'm concerned, uh, it feel, <laughs> feels as though uh, a, a veil uh, has been lifted uh, in my house, like there's something uh, more real and honest going uh, on. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I've I've seen Milo plenty of times on television. He's as gay as they fucking come. Um, <laughs> who are you fucking kidding? It's it's been a gradual uncovering rather than a dramatic uh, reveal. Maybe that it's like a pretty dramatic reveal. Uh, moment, the theater but yeah. spectacle is a sign uh, of of gay impulses truly uh, are receding. Um, 
<laughs> I do not believe a word of this. I do not believe well, any what, of what's, this. What's, what's, I think what's... I think he's still fucking his husband, uh, and what's... I think he's still having a good time with it. What's certain is that his precious his precious cash flow has been uh, re um, receding. Yeah, yep. if, if anyone remembers, um, uh, I think it was the beginning of two thousand and nineteen. He basically had a go at uh, uh, the, his fans on on Facebook for not giving him enough money. Yeah, and um, and. He's been kind of shit on by some uh, conservative platforms because I know Milo was kicked from uh, Parlor. Yes, because he he said that uh, he would publish um, Ben Shapiro's uh, phone phone number and address, didn't he? Uh, the former Breitbart <laughs> editor previously admitted he risks being uh, no uh, no longer able to put um, food on the table. After being permanently banned from Twitter, Facebook, in 2019 for violating hate speech rules, I, I enough, don't believe that enough, he's no longer able to put food. That that seems like more ways to play the victim to get money. He's now relegated to fringe uh, platforms. Uh, uh, Gab, well, he's banned now from Parler, Telegram, but says he is unable to build. A sufficient following there. Oh, here's the smallest violin. You're not Garrett. Oh, I feel I, so. I can't do a violin. I feel nice. so sorry for you, Milo. Not. <laughs> um, but says he is is unable to build a sufficient following. Yeah, yeah. Um, and good job too. Um, he's now. Uh, sorry. Sure enough. Uh, uh I'm just going to refer to him as Milo. Uh, newfound sexuality comes with a whole new uh, career direction. As you might <laughs> um, expect, uh, my professional priorities are shifting somewhat, given my new spiritual... Uh, <laughs> it's such a fucking grifter. I can't oh, take sorry. anything he says seriously. This is so fucking cringe. It really this funny. sounds like someone who is like, nah, I'm going for this story. This sounds like the sort of uh, uh, talking points that's going to be gone over in, like, I don't know, some sort of cheap film. Um, over the next decade, I would I would like to help uh, rehabilitate... Uh, re uh, I, would, I, would, I would like to help rehabilitate what uh, the media calls conversion therapy. It does work um, a bit, uh, f not for, for Albeit every, not for everybody. everybody. Um, some um, things, I mean, it's torture, so well, uh, yeah, it doesn't Some things really never, never change, though. Uh, Milo just uh, <laughs> couldn't resist the urge to mock uh, his fellow ex-gays, condemn demonic transgender people, and threaten to, yes. to, to, to hang uh, drag queens. Yeah, but he's always been. I a... have demonic powers now. Yeah, uh, didn't didn't he? Uh, yeah, th there is a meme going around about that. Uh, didn't even get uh, me started on drag queen uh, story hour. Uh, what is it with 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 conservatives and uh, hating on on drag queen story hour? I don't get it. Well, well because yeah. they 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 uh, have already already done the presupposition. That anyone who is trans or uh, a gay or a drag queen is secretly a pedophile trying to um, rape children. Well, yeah, I, I was going to say that because uh, sorry, I wasn't going to say that. Um, <laughs> fuck it up. I was going to say <laughs> I was going to clip that out of fucking context. Um, I was going to say ever you know you know way back to even Shakespeare. Well particularly in Shakespeare's era, you know, you've had what you just could describe as drag queens because at that point, women weren't uh, uh, allowed to, to perform in, in theatres. Yeah. So, um, you know, and I mean, Mino should be aware of the sort of tradition of pantomime in this country and the pantomime dame is always a drag queen. Um, oh, fuck. Talking about Mino conversion therapy... Uh, 
Oh, wow. He's what? opening a conversion therapy clinic. Yeah, yeah self, self, self-titled. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, we know what he is. Is that a um, sparkly Make America Great Again hat? It is. Uh, has announced plans to open his conversion therapy clinic in, in Florida a week after declaring himself ex-gay. He he is doing a good job selling. Why 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 why? I'm sorry, the sparkles make it better. Why go? I don't the, have a good reason why, for why, it. Why why go all the way to Florida, mate? You could do it here because I mean the fucking Tory government, you know, dragging their fucking feet, you know, in banning fucking conversion therapy. Plus, also, um, the, I mean, it's because uh, uh, Florida is near um. Uh, Mexico and other southern uh, uh, borders in that way if you can um, purchase a second facility so even if they outlaw conversion therapy in Florida they can take them uh, to Flor- to a Florida facility and then ship them to uh, a facility outside the country so they can still do conversion therapy um yeah, um, I mean, yeah, now he's throwing the LGBTQ um, community under the bus. Um, well, the LGBTQ yeah. community has never liked Milo, so, well, fuck him. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, I For mean, a lot of reasons. He supported Trump. I mean, you know. Um, he's, yeah. He is just a troll who just really doesn't deserve our attention. But I just He's got thought, good fashion sense, though. I just thought I'd, I'd read out the um, that... Uh, um, article because it was so fucking cringe. Anyways, before we get on to our main video, I'll just try to show you this. That, obviously, is Milo. That is Jane Faye. Jane Faye is going to be on my sh- uh, on this stream on Thursday. That, by the way, is Julie Bindle, um, who's another turf. Um, yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, my friend Jane has actually met Milo. Poor soul. Yeah, you know fucking everybody. Um... Anyways, yes, we get to this. <laughs> now, before we start, um, this is the biggest trigger warning I can issue. This is yes. as transphobic as it fucking gets. There's also anti Semitism. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, not... well, uh, uh, Blair White is chock full of anti-Semitism and white supremacist dog whistles. If you don't like what's played in the first few seconds of this, because there's a preview of some of the shit said, then don't watch any further. Um, uh, who are... Uh, sorry, I, I don't know the other people as well. Um, I'm trying to figure out who who I should uh, fucking hate from this. Well, the person bullshit. the person to hate is Lauren um, uh, Witzke. Uh, that's her yeah. there. She is an out and out fascist. John Doyle, um, and there is uh, Ka- uh, Carolyn uh, uh, Borisenko. Yeah, she's more liberal, right? Now the other thing about this video is you'll find out this out. Blair does nothing to push back against the transphobia thrust her way. Well, yeah, because she is protected because she looks pretty and therefore transphobia can't really affect her um, because she's pretty well, no, no, it's and directed, has it's money. Directly, direct, it's directed at her. Yeah, yeah she does it doesn't nothing, matter. Doesn't she's do, pretty. Yeah, so, but essentially Blair White is yet again <laughs> throwing the trans community under the fucking bus. Anyways, I don't want to spoil it too much, but yeah, no, I I legit Kevin Logan, oh, not Kevin Logan, Dusty Smith, uh, yesterday started to was going to get to this, and I was just like, no, I don't want spoilers. Yeah. I want to see this shit. Right, here we go. <laughs> so if you can't if you can't deal with the first few seconds, then don't watch on. Even I, you know, who is thick skinned and can give as good as they get was shocked by some of the language used. Carl here was the first one to celebrate me being... Carlin! Hold on, hold on. Am I right at the beginning? Yeah. You're three seconds in now. Okay, we'll do that again. 
Dr. Carl here was the first one to celebrate me being Harlan. Harlan. Well, um, well also, I celebrated that you were banned on Twitter I, I because say, you repeatedly I, tweeted I that my husband it. should be deported, Lauren. He's no, a legal alien. alien. I don't really know how much you know about me, but I'm probably the most vocal anti-children transitioning person on the internet. It's what I'm. Right. Almost, I, it's well, I, I let, I let you speak. The best thing you can do for us is I, grow out your mustache and tell people not to live like you. Okay then. I. Oh wow. There's been a lot of arguments on Twitter recently where people cannot decide what it means to be right wing or what the future of the party is. If you don't know why that's important, well, just look around you at the radical leftism, all the insanity in the culture, and a president who borrowed an election and a country who wonders what is our future and who is going oh. to save us. All right, I should wow. explain something about the term borrowed an election. They can't say uh, robbed because yeah. YouTube have banned conservatives from doing that. So they yeah, use the, because the, it's, the, it's the, untrue. Yes, it so, is. Yeah. So, uh, the euphemism now is borrowed. Okay, so I just thought... I yeah, should... and you can make... An, you can make uh, I, I'm sure the, it gives him a nice little fallback position to be like, well, he was uh, Obama's vice president, so he effectively borrowed everything that he has from Obama or whatever. Yeah. They could just fall back on that, even though they're talking mm -hmm. about stolen election stuff. Yeah. All right. Us from this absolute madness. Well, a lot of people seem to disagree, which is why I brought a panel of guests on to talk about what the future of the right wing looks like and how we win back our country. We can bring them on the screen. Uh, I went ahead and I invited on a myriad of people. I have uh, the other thing is right. This guy's hosting this this um, this uh, panel, right? Yeah, he's got really bad sound. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I mean, I, I don't have the best sound, but. Uh, yeah, I have sounds better fucking better. Sound. Yeah, and that shouldn't be the Carlin, case. Carlin, he's called Carlin Borisenko. Well yeah, done, awesome commentator. We also have uh, Lauren Witzke. Uh, she ran for uh, uh, Congress in Delaware. We also have Blair White. And likes to kick puppies, from what I've heard. Seriously, I... go, go and check out Dylan Burns. Um, uh, reaction to this. He, go, he talks about uh, that she allegedly kicked some puppies. <laughs> well, gotcha. Kept... So she lacks she's, she's really any nice. sense of empathy. Yeah. So, yeah. White YouTuber as well and John Doyle YouTuber and they're all here to answer these questions. So let's uh, talk a little bit about this as we get into this. Starting with Lauren, um, how do you describe yourself politically? Okay, so I am socially conservative. I'm advocately, I've always been economically populist. Uh, economic populism is the future of our party. However, preserving social conservatism within the Republican Party um, is a real passion of mine. I'm very pro-family. I'm very pro-life. Uh, my whole motto is I just like to win and save babies. So that's what I do. Awesome. Uh, Blair, I... you tell us where you lean politically. Don't believe that shit. Yeah, every political quiz I've ever taken matches center right so that's me i don't have sort of the popular story everyone ah actually no she took the political compass test recently and volsh noticed that she skipped a question and also manipulated the results because uh she actually came out as left and of course you know she's got uh, blair has to keep up this pretense that She's, you know, center right, you know, because I mean, she is probably still pretty right wing with a lot of her her attitude. She just probably doesn't actually believe any of it. She just doesn't care the the collateral damage. Well, no, she has to keep up this pretense because that's what the Koch yeah. brothers are sponsoring her for. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, again. I mean, the question doesn't come up, but, you know, I have to ask, Blair, which, which Coke brother's cock did you have to suck? The one who's dead or the one who's still alive? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, I, I was tempted. I didn't know if I was going to get away with it. But, you know, I always, every time I hear Blair speak, I always want to play the Frank Zappa song. Valley girl, valley girl, she's a valley girl. Because she is. I mean, she has like this whole fucking valley girl bimbo 
image. You know, yeah, she, she has well, to she has to tick all the fucking cis normative fucking you know uh, checkbox stereotypes, doesn't well, she? Yeah. You know? Well, um, uh, no, the bimbo thing is clearly because she wants to um, be someone who the conservative people can jerk off to. Yeah. And loves of like I'm a former liberal. I'm a lifelong Republican. Always voted that way. And yeah, that's me. I'm definitely a little bit less socially conservative. And uh, that's where I live. John, go ahead. It's a pretty clear copy paste uh, between Lauren and myself, I think. Oh, oh, really sorry. Hold on one, one second. Let me just go back a bit. Now, there's one other thing I've noticed. Uh, she said she was formerly on the left, but a lifelong Republican voter. No, I... it states the cop. Let me explain. In some of Blair's videos, right, she sucks out and she's taking a drink out of a Chick-fil-A cup. Everything Blair White does in her videos is very deliberate. Okay? Yeah. Now, we all know about Chick-fil-A and what they do with their profits, don't we? Yes. Yeah. They give them to anti-LGBTQ initiatives, right? Yeah. Well, you know, Blair White taking, uh, you know, uh, swigging from a, a, a Chick-fil-A cup is essentially a fuck you to the LGBTQ community, right? And she doesn't think I, we pick up on these things. Well, I do. Yeah. You see, Blair, some people are actually more intelligent than you. Well, in fact, probably, the yeah, well, considering how stupid you are, um, um, quite a lot well, of Well, she plays into that to some degree, but yeah. Self, I think, fiscally populist and uh, socially conservative. Carlin, are you different than them? Yeah, I'm a little bit different in that, um, I, you know, some people say I'm a former liberal. I'm actually a current liberal. I have never stopped being a liberal, even though I did leave the Democratic Party. Um, I Politically, on my political compass test, I tend to be right in the center, and I frankly just want common sense people to come up with common sense solutions. Awesome. So as we get into this, I want to let you know something important. This is... Hold on. Common sense... Solutions, yeah, um, yeah, because yeah, Trump was full of those, wasn't he? Not well. I mean, so the the center of the political compass test is um, not actually a great place. Well, the political compass test, I don't think, is that great, anyways, because it always tries to put people down the towards the left libertarian uh, square, doesn't it? Um, if you've noticed, yeah. that it has that bias about it. Um, it's actually hard to to. Yeah. Um, do it without without lacking some amount of empathy. It's hard to to go full conservative or far right on that. Yeah. Well, Lauren wouldn't have a problem with that, as you'll see. Well, yeah, I know, but like. Anyways, anyways, let's get most on with people it. Shall, do. shall we get on with it? Yeah. This is a, the first question we're going to jump into, which is, what is the future of the right wing? Right. If we're going to win a war, if we're going to fight the left, win a war. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not, I mean, so in general, the, the principle of most politics, uh, at least democratic politics, uh, if we're talking about fascism, that's a, a different goal there, but democratic politics is supposed to be a be bit more for the people. No, no, yeah, going to fucking war, fucking hell. It's supposed to be for the people of America, and you're saying you should Anyways. go to war yeah. We're fucking liberals. Fucking hell. But the, 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 just that language there, you know? I mean, I know yeah. some people say I'm very combative. Yes, I am. But, you know, I'm not... I mean, the, 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 I, I would say that uh, I defend trans people from... for You know, trans people are fighting, fighting a war of sin, of, of, of sorts. You know, in, in that, you know, we're all... But we're, it's a defensive war against, you know, people who are continuously attacking us, like you see here. Right. But I just I just I don't know. I always I feel troubled when the far right always say we need, you know, how do we win the war? It always troubles me when, when I because I know that the far right have a propensity for violence. Anyways. Yeah. We've got to figure out who's on our side. And there's a split of trying to figure out if the future of the right is. Oh, we need to figure out who's on our side. Oh, in other words, you, you want to carry out a witch hunt. You're not conservative enough. 
Right. Yeah, well, okay. well you're not, uh, it's you're, a you're, false dichotomy. You're, you're either you're, conservative or liberal. If you're, if you're not either of those, that makes no sense. Yeah, taking the fucking yeah, you, you, you know, basically want purity. I mean, particularly Lauren, as you'll find out. Oh and, yeah, and, and John Doyle. Anyways, is a conservative moral Christian party. Um, a conservative Christian moral party, in other words, a fascist party. Well, uh... That, 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 that's basically, you know, I'm a white Christian, you know, family, family, that, 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 you're a fucking fascist. Anyway, well, yeah, but I mean... The, let's, let's get on with it. The is they don't follow any of the, the tenets of uh, Christianity. They yeah, yeah, we'll, 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 any of the teachings we'll, of, of Jesus. Yeah, we'll, we'll, the, we'll, the Christ yeah. We'll, we'll get there. That is a okay. strong nationalist background or if it's well, there, there you are. There's the key: the strong nationalist background, you know, as well as being a yeah, a, no, that a, that's a, saying a, that conservatism should be uh, uh, fascist sympathizers. Yeah, basically, what he's just said is that the GO, GOP should be fucking fascist. Anyways, well, it already yeah. it already is, um, pretty much. It's this big tent party full of liberals libertarians, disaffected left, etc. Before we jump into that, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor for today. Guys, the world is getting crazy. No, no, is no, 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 getting easy no, out there. No, not only do no, we have no, defensive no, no, equipment no, no. party that opposed games. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I'm really confused why this is a discussion about the future of the right when we have a liberal, actually she's a Democrat, with one good opinion. Uh, we also have a transgender on here. A transgender. A ring from the fucking start. We have one of them transgenders down here. Yeah. You know. Uh, you know, I don't really think we should be giving a platform uh, to this kind of generosity. Which transgender uh, people uh, uh, shouldn't speak. Yeah. If how, I speak, I, I have the, to the listen far right, to the far what right they are, say. The far right are already always complaining about <laughs> fucking cancel culture, and is is a fucking far right, you know cunt and she is a fucking nazi cunt um yeah basically wanting to deplatform you know um you know uh, uh, a, a, a trans woman so yeah. is a uh, gateway drug to pedophilia you know i absolutely oh god yeah, yeah that that oh. there just that 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 is uh, you know it, it gets worse the transgenders are after our children only our fathers supposed yeah. to touch our children inappropriately. Yeah, this is what they used to accuse uh, gays. I mean, she probably would still uh, accuse gays and lesbians of being pedos. This is yeah. The, yeah the, I I remember those. You, you you know, back in the nineteen eighties, when 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 the, the press is full of you know how you know uh, gay men were were predators on 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 young boys and stuff like that. You know. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. We disagree. You know. We were the party of traditional marriage. We were the party that opposed gay marriage. We've always been that party. We've always been the party. You've always been the party of bigots. Well, actually, no, you haven't. Um, yeah. Abraham Lincoln was a rep Republican. Um, yeah. Um, for those who don't know their history, um, the Republican Party, when it when it was first first came into being, was actually the was actually the Progressive Party. Yeah, uh, I can't remember why long, 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 switched long, in the early 1900s. Yeah, um, a long, 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 long time ago, um, and it was in fact actually the the, yeah, the Republicans who who pushed for progressive policies. For instance, it was the Republicans who actually brought about the vo votes for women. So um, you know stuff like that. Yeah, and, and naturally we do tend to ignore the fact that Abraham Lincoln did want to. Uh, send all black people to different country. Well, look, I mean, I'm saying he was progressive for his time. Okay? Yeah, no, no, I know. I, I just want to give him shit because... Uh, well, there's also that like argument it. that the reason he ab he wanted to abolish slavery was because it was he came from Kentucky, I think it was, and that he, what he saw there was that... It, um, uh, manual labor. Uh, ma there was a high unemployment rate because manual labors were undercut by the f by, by the fact that you know they, uh, they you know basically um, uh, um, you know uh, uh, employers didn't have to pay slaves, did they? So um, yeah, 
you know, uh, yeah, whatever. Anyways, that's beside the point. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Party of family. We won handedly in 2016 without the LGBTQ vote. We started losing when we started compromising. So I'm really curious why uh, people who are libertarians, I mean, you have a party of freaks who love the free market that you can join. But don't come into our party and try to influence it because that is how we are losing. And in case you... So, she's happy with the Republican Party being the party of exclusion. Well, yes. That's going to win. And, that's gonna, and that's gonna not win. just that she's wrong. Um, the uh, excessive exclusion was part of the reason why the Republicans got voted out of so many places. Yeah. Um, you haven't noticed we are losing, uh, you know. Yeah, and you'll keep on losing if you adopt the attitude that you do. Uh, you, you, you know, your kind of attitude. You know, well, actually, the Republican Party pretty much already has, but um, you know, the Republicans are going to keep on losing. You know, yeah. In fact, because... maybe, maybe, maybe I should, I, maybe I should be pleased that uh, you know the likes of her are trying to take over the Republican Party because she'll help kill it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So they are now advocating for chemical castrations for children. We're spotlighting transgender. No, no, no. Nobody's that's a, that's advocating a, for whatever the fuck you're saying with chemical. God damn it, the fucking chemical castration, castration of children. Fuck off. No, that's a fucking you know transphobic lie. I'm at CPAC, yeah. um, and I am a traditional Christian conservative. I believe I'm a traditional Christian conservative. In other words, I'm a fascist. <laughs> family. I believe that family is the foundation of everything that this country was founded on. But what if the families are a bunch of assholes? What if the well, what, 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 what if the family is a bunch of wife beaters and uh, and and and, and uh, 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 pedophiles? You know? Yeah. Look, the, the they're, whole, they're the whole, fans the whole... of the family. This is why. The conservatives are fans of the ICE detention centers uh, separating families because they're fans of families. Yeah. So they wanted to separate them and uh, uh, keep children away from having a family because they're fans of the family. <laughs> and no, I do not believe that we should be compromising our values and spotlighting a lifestyle that is a gateway drug to pedophilia every single it's no there's so much wrong with that i can't i can't even i don't even know where to start with how wrong that yeah. she keeps saying it too yeah and i'm sure she's going to keep con uh continuing to say that um yeah i yeah. mean this is this is a this is a uh, well i mean it's a homophobic and transphobic but it is a fascist dog whistle uh, it is it's dog whistling to fascists okay single yeah. time and you cannot deny it isn't because it's here Blair would you respond I think that there's a difference between you spoke sort of to gender ideology which is definitely rampant on college campuses definitely. gender ideology yeah, uh, that's no. There's no. There's no. Thing. There's no giant fucking gender ident uh, ideology conspiracy, right? People just identify as different genders. What's wrong with that? What harm I mean, is it? It's a bunch doing? of people describing themselves. Yeah, people are prepared to be themselves. Yeah, language changes. Yeah, people learn things and and they do different things with the language. It's a strange change ideology where people learn and improve. Yeah. It's horrible. It's horrible all the learning and improving. It's going to ruin the country. Definitely taking over culture. I think that's different than just people who, as individuals, may technically be gay, lesbian, bisexual, any of the above. Um, and I think that it's possible to fight against gender ideology with while holding true that there are going to be people that are just different in life. I don't the other thing is, she's not pushing... You see, I've told you, she doesn't push back at all through this whole fucking um, debate, right? She's just been accused of being a paedophile. Right? Yeah. Essentially. She doesn't push back against it because she wants to be the good trans. The trans... 
the you know the the, the trans which which the far right can trust you know yeah i hate to tell you blair but when you're surface service to requirements right you're on the cow truck and off to the fucking gas ovens with the rest of us all right yeah i definitely am not here to speak to the future of social conservatism because that's just not my lane but as far as the party um I think that a big tent is most likely the future. I think that speaking, knowing my generation and a lot of people my age, which is mid twenties and and Gen Z a little younger, I think that they voted for Trump the first and second time or just the second time um, because Trump kind of ushered the party into an era of a little more secularism. I don't think he was overtly religious. Um, (laughs) What? What? What universe are you fucking living in? Oh, there's, I mean, there's, like uh, even, even. Uh, uh, oh, God damn it! I forgot her name. The former runner, uh, Caitlyn Jenner. Um, even Caitlyn Jenner understands that Trump is bad. Is she did an era of secularism? The fucking he's fucking uh, MAGA is 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 a fucking cult. Uh, all his, Trump's policies have been for promoting religious uh, policies. The anti-abortion thing is a religious policy. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anti-gay adoption is, you know, uh, you know, uh, anti-trans adoption. You know, all the stuff that he's done has been pandering to the fuck, fucking Christian fundamentalist base. Yeah. I mean, okay, maybe he wasn't uh, hasn't been overtly. Uh, uh, um, you know, I'm a you know about being a born again Christian or whatever the fuck else, like George W. Bush was, but you know, but his followers aren't consider him the second coming of Christ. Yeah, it's, what I'm saying essentially <laughs> is that you know you talk about secularism, there is no fucking secularism because the followers of fucking Trump are a cult, a religion of them of themselves. Religious, I think. To an extent, he was a little performative with with religion and with prayer and things like that. Um, And I think that attracted a lot of new voters. And um, I'm not sure that, you know, going full force religious social conservatism is really the future. John, can you respond? Yeah, I think that the concept of a big tent movement is basically this sort of intra-party democracy that prevents us ultimately from being effective at actually wielding power. And this could date back even to what's referred to as the Reagan Uh, coalition. Gotcha. Fascist. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, uh, Because, yes, it does take longer if you're trying to get people to agree on something. But that being said, accountability is an important thing to try to prevent fascists because fascism is not a good thing it causes a lot of problems and causes a lot of death coalition where we try to unite social conservatives with libertarians uh, with fiscal conservatives and then we created something which ultimately didn't last in effect where we're now on the back foot with things such as gender identity and even now we're trying it you know with pandering to different minority groups different interest groups which will pandering to different minorities Oh, you mean listening to their concerns? Oh, no. how? How? <laughs> no. Well, well, the Republicans, no, the Republicans they, don't. They, the Republicans don't do that. Okay. Yeah, they no, they they find. Yeah, the Republican uh, are the are the white angry man party. Okay, <laughs> that's that's basically it. Okay never give us more than 8% of the vote, for example. So I think that to actually try something different would be to legitimately establish a strong party with the values that were nominally in support of and actually wielding the power effectively when we we are given the chance instead of getting into power and then doing nothing and trying to pander to these groups thinking that we're going to own the libs and take their voting base away from them. Yeah, Carlin, I'm interested to hear your perspective because obviously this would be a, a question that would pertain to you directly since you admit that you're a liberal and you just registered as a Republican. I mean, give us your thoughts. Yeah. I did. Well, the fact of the matter is that MAGA is not a religious movement. MAGA is a political movement. No, it is a cult. Yeah, well, it's a cult of personality. So uh, it's Mm. one of those things where religion is tied to it, much like with neo-Nazis, Catholicism is tied to uh, neo-Nazi movements. Similarly, um, uh, Christianity of some sort is tied to the worship 
of Donald J. Trump. And I do mean worship because there are plenty of mega people who do quite literally worship Trump. It's kind of concerning movement and in order to win elections you have to win votes the fact of the matter is that donald trump has never cared about gay marriage it was never something that he was against dude hung out at studio 54 why would he care and so all right so he went to studio 54 so he's a friend of the gays no just because you go to some some famous you know nightclub does not mean that you you know you you support the fucking lgbt community nor does the fact that when you 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 know you just you know, I mean, there was, there's that, obviously there's that photo with him uh, holding the fucking uh, rainbow flag. Uh, yeah. You know, doesn't mean shit. I am on the side of winning too, Lauren. I'm on the side of winning elections. The fact of the matter is that Donald Trump created a Big Ten strategy that brought 10 million more people to him in 2020 than he did in 2016. And if we go back and look at the history of the Republican Party and when they lost the culture war the first time, Ronald Reagan offered a big tent. He said, everyone is welcome in this big tent. He won two terms. George H.W. Bush followed him. The Republicans were in control for 12 years until what happened? The moral majorities tried to swoop right in and started legislating Christianity. And She's actually right. That's right. Um, 1992. I remember the Republican convention in 1992 and it, and it was very, you know, that basically you had you had the likes of Pat Buchanan and, and, and others wanting to take the party, you know, to, to well to where Donald Trump has taken them now. But at that time, and that's you know one reason they they lost the ninety two you know uh, elections. Well, um, I mean, uh, it doesn't hurt the, that Clinton was a former Republican. Yeah, his, his wife uh, Hillary. She was a Goldwater supporter. Anyways, uh, t- uh, anyways, onwards. And that is when they lost the culture war. That is when they started losing voters. When they started trying to legislate their religion the first time around. The First Amendment says Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of a religion or the prohibit they're prohibiting the free exercise of their of their thereof. So it protects your. Yeah, I always thought conservatives masturbated over 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 the um the the constitution and thought it was well, etched, it's not etched, etched etched in fucking stone. Anyways, the, the, that's the well, point. Yeah, but, that, but they that, don't. No, wait, wait, they no, just no, think no. it looks pretty. We haven't got uh, all day, my darling. So you know. Um, Sorry. Your right to practice your religion as much as it protects my right to practice mine. This is not a question of religion. If you want to do whatever you want to do in church, that's fine. Go talk to your church elders. Go talk to your deacons. She sounds more of a libertarian than a liberal, if you ask me. Yeah. Exclude anyone you want from your church. But the fact of the matter is that I would really like if the Democrats didn't control everything. Now, that's a key thing here. She she just wants to be different, right? That's that's the thing, right? She just wants to be different. It's pretty obvious from everything she says, or well, almost everything she says. She does say one really stupid fucking thing towards the end, but um, it's obvious to me that she just wants to be different. And the fact remains, yeah. the Democrats are her are a natural fucking pie, you know. But she has to be an awkward bitch. And in order for that to happen, we need to win. And that means building the broadest possible coalition of voters that we can. And that's what I think we should do. Lauren, that's pretty much opposite of what you brought up and what you were saying. Um, could Could you please respond to that? Yeah. So, you know, Donald Trump, he did do things that made the church have to make excuses for him. His Globo Homo initiative. I am a global initiative. Yet another dog whistle to uh, fascists. Well, yeah, and and also calling it the global homo. Just so much wrong with that. Just I can't. This woman is just full of hate. Yeah. Uh, ended up losing him a significant amount of the Christian vote, and we are the base of this party. We make up a huge portion of this party, a way bigger portion than the liberal libertarian sector of the party, no matter how much they want to tell you. Um, You know, so him making those compromises is probably a big part of why we lost, you know, we lost the House in 2018. You know, in 2017, we had the House. Of course, it hasn't occurred to you that maybe swinging too far to the fucking right is, 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 is the reason why you lost. 
Nah, yeah, cause... I know. Um, yeah. The thing that, is, that, there that... are a lot of voters because a lot of people were scared of how right uh, the country was going. There are a lot of Democrats who just don't feel like the Democratic Party is doing enough. And there were fuck tons of votes because you know what? Uh, fascism scares some people. Yeah. Uh, the executive branch and the Senate. And we still failed uh, on conservative issues. They refused to stand up for life. You know, they still passed a budget that um, actually made us forced Christian taxpayers to fund Planned Parenthood. You know, so... I'll tell you what, my darling. Right, if you're, if you're so fucking opposed to fucking abortion, why don't you adopt, you know children uh, who, who mothers can't can't afford to bring up or aren't capable of bringing up, huh? Yeah? Nah, it's easier to keep them in cages. Well, every vote lost on social conservative, uh, consul social conservatism is, you know, we are significantly more. We are the party that was established in traditional marriage. So I'm curious when the liberals and the transgenders decided that it was their duty to come and infiltrate our party to make it successful because we were doing just fine. Um, we started actually losing votes when we started pandering. Uh, we lost a significant amount what of our pandering? Bait. Pandering. Pandering. What pandering? What pandering? Well, what pandering? What? What? Oh, opposing gay marriage and LGBTQ rights. And abortion. All that pandering. And, and, oh, and, and abortion rights. Yeah, trying and also supporting really racist shit. All the pandering. Yeah, no, no. Peace uh, enough to make an effect and make a dent into uh, the electorate by compromising our values. The only way forward is to stay true to our values that we've always been and established. Okay, you, 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 you have your fascist party, and uh, you know you, 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 you'll keep the Democrats and. In control of fucking Congress and, and the White House, you know, for fucking decades to come. Yeah, go well, go, right, go, is... go right ahead, go right ahead. Uh, you know, go go right ahead. You know, <laughs> well, the... I, I I should I should be happy. You know, the, the thing is, the mask's off here, isn't it? Yeah. yeah? There's 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 there, there, there's no you know manipulative bullshit. You know, she is just full of hate. This is the true voice and face of the Republican Party. And also, they've become more conservative over time. Like they, like talking about like the the values of the the Republican Party. The Republican Party used to care about the fucking environment. There's a reason uh, uh, Nixon signed the um, uh, last significant um, environmental policy, or one of the last significant ones with the, the <sighs> starting of the EPA. Like, the Republican Party used to have that value and lost it. And they don't care about that value. They just want the values that make them look cool to them. Sean, ...and win with them, you know? It's the weakness. People value strength over anything else. That's another oh, fascist God. thought whistle. Yeah, no. Strength. Yeah, yeah. Fascists don't we, look, we... fascists don't like weakness. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and when we started yeah, showing different. weakness and compromise, that's when we started losing. Um, and I don't think that is something that we should continue. I think that we should remain the party of Jesus Christ, the party of life. Yeah, because Jesus was such a fat. Uh, Jesus being a hippie was such a fascist, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah, think, well, I don't well, th I don't think this 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 conservative Christian family values woman has ever read the Bible yeah because um, uh, well she has listened to um, the uh, 1930s the the spread of the um, the movement to uh, try to tie Christianity with capitalism because Christianity at its very core is a socialist book. Yeah. And they they don't, they can't have that. The party they value that celebrates Christianity family and makes it as easy as possible for Americans to get married and have children. Why would I celebrate a lifestyle that uh, people can't reproduce? Uh, wrong. 
Yeah. Wrong. No, uh, Wrong. LGBT does not prevent yeah. uh, reproduction. Yeah. You know, there's this thing called medical science. Obviously, you know, uh, you, you being a fundamentalist Christian, you, you know, you're opposed to, you know, science, despite the fact that, you know, you're, you, you are communicating over to a device which was invented by science, um, you know, but as it goes with medical science, you know, uh, medical science has advanced to the stage where you actually don't need heterosexual people really anymore. Well, yeah, and, and also, obviously, these talking points don't um, factor in the fact that uh, there is crossover between male and female, which is how you can have a trans woman get pregnant because she was born with a uterus along with the assigned male at birth parts and it's just yeah you like they can't deal with that you know you can't reproduce you just can't um you know so having families uh that is the future of the party we started losing when we started compromising big tent okay. is a lie um Lauren, it is in there real fast and give important. give blair a chance to respond to that sure i think the concept of more people infiltrating a party isn't necessarily what has happened. I think that the modern left has shown its hand to such an extent that people are just being extremely turned off by it. No, it's just that you saw, uh, you know, more, more dollars in, in, in throwing tra uh, yeah. the LGBT community under the fucking bus because, you know, um, you know, the Koch brothers, um, you know, give you money to do so, you know, um, that's why, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, hates. Uh, you know, I mean, it's really sad that there, there, there's pay and hate, but you know, that's unfortunately the case. You know, I mean, one of the reasons I'm do, you know, doing this stream is is to counter counter that. Um, you know, yeah. um, and the reason why Kevin Logan and Dusty Smith are also doing it. Um, yeah, because uh, some people aren't turned on by the giant bulges of money from, that are um, surrounding the, yeah. the Koch brothers. Um, I, again, being a lifelong Republican voter, I've never had a moment where I entered the party and then had plans to change it from within. I think that every American has a right to vote in any direction that they choose. Um, and I think especially over the next four years of the Biden presidency, there's probably going to be a lot more people who are uh, red-pilled, I guess, is going to be the term, um, and wanting to vote, you know, in the opposite direction of how things ended up in November. And I also would say, you know, Trump got the most votes of any sitting president in history. Right. That is what she just said there. It's a very manipulative term she used. Yeah, well... Sitting um, president. Yeah, the and, most votes of a sitting president. Yeah, no, you can you can frame it how you want. I I just still think the red pill blue still pill stuff is funny because um, yeah, it's, the it's, Wachowskis are not conservative. No, and to be like yeah, red pill to see the truth, and then it's like also yeah, also no, also left wing also Blair, the Blair, Blair, Blair I hate to t tell you but um, the Matrix is actually an, an allegory for being trans the Wachowskis have fucking confirmed it and guess what they're both trans oh yes and, and also uh, a lot of the storyline relating to humanity and the um, artificial intelligence uh, you know, confronting each other because they're different. Like, a lot of it is about... A lot of The Matrix is about uh, equality and finding a way to eventually well, as, work as I together said, and find as, peace. As I said, it's an allegory for being trans. The Wachowskis have confirmed this. We always knew it, right? Yeah, well, no, I mean, there's there's, if, there's other if, subplots. Well, well, if you're... Yes, but if you're trans, right, and you watch The Matrix, you get it, okay? So, yeah. anyways. I think that's true. Right? That's... Right. And um, I think there's a reason for that. I think what I spoke to earlier was the push towards more secularism. And I think that while social conservatives and religious conservatives still voted Trump because it was the right direction. And like you said, they did make a lot of excuses and compromises on their beliefs. Um, I think Trump really and Trumpism is the future of the party and the future of success. Oh, I'm also one of those people that 
I don't know, this might have to be edited out for YouTube, but I'm not completely convinced that the election was won by Biden by completely um, oh, legitimate God. means. So, oh, um, I think this isn't the first time Blair White has dabbled in fucking conspiracy theories. You know, she, oh, she, 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 she was one of those who was um, basically propagating the Pizzagate conspiracy theory. Um, yeah, no, that doesn't H Hunter, surprise me at Hunter, all. Hunter Avalon put that in his video about Blair. I thought that was very interesting. And also, uh, just to remind people, Blair White has actually been on InfoWars. She's been on an exchange uh, show. Yeah. Just, what? just you can say it was borrowed. You can't say oh, stolen, yeah. but you can okay. say the election was borrowed. Um, and so, even though, yeah, Biden won, I still think Trump is the future of of the right in general. So, Okay, John, why don't you jump in there? I think that's correct in that Trump is the future of the Republican Party. But what's interesting about that um, is that during his first campaign and even his second campaign, he really didn't touch on LGBT issues that much. I mean, you know, he, he held up the flag, I think, at a few events at the advice probably of people like Jared Kushner. But if you right, that's an anti-Semitic dog whistle. Yeah, I, so it's, I it's oh, it was the Jew who was pushing uh, 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 LGBT equality as an issue. Yeah, and also just, I mean, he Trump did a lot of anti-trans stuff, so he did a lot of LGBTQ stuff in that sense. Yeah, um, but I'm just pointing out, as well as transphobia, homophobia, uh, you know, which was just, you know, you know, clearly on display, that... It, you know, there's also anti-Semitism mixed in with this as well. So, so what what I'm hearing is that there are. I mean, you could say the homo more people here, if you include the announcer as well, who are anti-Semitic fuckwads, and one person who is who calls herself in the center mm -hmm. or whatever, and and might just be a regular shitty conservative person um the other thing is the homo glo the global the global homo thingy that's also you could consider as a ho uh, as an anti-semitic conspiracy theory because yeah because the the global agenda yeah if you look at where his voters actually sit on the political spectrum they're not the right-wing libertarians that a lot of big donors would like the party to be they're actually basically authoritarian in the center and so if you look at where they poll on issues so center Center of what? Yeah, center, center, so, center of, of the the thirteen hundreds. So center of fascism? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Such as like gay well, marriage, I mean, they, traditional marriage. I mean, he admits like, authoritarian issues, like whatever. They're all like very, uh, I guess you'd say, authoritative and, and conservative in that, and that they're in support of traditional and socially conservative policies. And so that's where the momentum in the party is. And so if you're going to come over and vote for Republicans because you agree with their positions on foreign policy or fiscal policy or what have you, that's all in fine. But what we can't do is start to compromise and say that, like, you can come over here and we're actually going to pander to you as well and give you positions at CPAC. And I think it's interesting because... Hey, mate, to win the general election, you actually have to reach, you have to, um, you know, uh, appeal to, uh, you know, um, uh, um, more than, uh, you know, to, to further than, than the actual base, right? Um, yeah. You know, uh, and, well, you know, I mean, I, I should, if John Doyle and, and Lauren Wetz, uh, Lauren Wetz, Wetz, Lauren, who the fuck cares? Yeah. Um, if, if those two want, want the Republican Party to be fascist again, I'll say, fine, go right ahead. You'll lose election after election. Oh, I'm sure you'll get the odd senator elected here and there. You know, because there's always going to be pockets of fascism in the United States, in, particularly in the deep south, unfortunately, uh, where people, you know, time and time again vote against their own self-fucking interests. But, um, you know, um, you know, go right ahead. A lot of people that are trying to join the, the Republican Party, the conservative movement, and then bring to light more of these, like, LGBT issues are basically showing their hand in that they're not actually conservative. And I'm not speaking about you guys specifically, just like the rhetoric that I deal with online, because fundamentally the idea of like LGBT issues is about the enshrinement of total equality, which is fundamentally not a conservative idea. Conservatives. Ah, uh, thank you for admitting that. 
Yeah, I Conservat- mean, it's a conservative Conserv- idea. It's a Christian idea. Conservatism's about hierarchy and survival of the fittest. <laughs> you really are, you know, the mask is real. The fascist mask is really off, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. C- keep keep going, John. Keep going, Lauren. Yeah. The more you say, the the, the bigger the the the, the hole you're digging the Republican Party. <laughs> Believe in hierarchy and natural law and, and the idea that we can have total equality. Of- yeah, survival of the fittest. Which, by the way, Hitler also believed in. Um, so. Yeah, and, and it's a, a very... Well, it's against the teachings of Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so it's not really a Christian attitude because... Yeah, but these, um, these two haven't fucking wrote, read the f- a page of the fucking Bible. Count on it. Well, none of these people probably have. Across the board for... Well, Blair's an atheist. <clears throat> I mean, that makes it more likely that she's read the Bible, but she probably hasn't. Hmm. Different types of relationships or different types of marriages, quote unquote, is just fundamentally not a conservative idea. And so if we want... Not another, not another, not another, Right. I thought conservatives believed in individual liberty, individual freedom. Yeah, right? no. They, they... But, uh, but, apparently, <laughs> but apparently not according to John Doyle. Like, uh, you know, but the conservatives want, want want to fucking police what happens in in uh, you know between consenting adults in the fucking bedroom, yeah. Um, yeah, well, it's really important because they need to breed a strong army to carry the American flag and plant it on every country on the world. But it's those other people who are doing a global agenda. Want to have success in the future as a party, we have to actually like maintain a strong footing on what it actually means to be conservative, which we haven't done in the last seventy years, I'd say. Yeah, so I'm going to tweak this a little bit to you, Carlin, um, as as that question that he said, right? Is like this is the question a lot of people ask on the traditional right: is that the right has been defined, uh, the right has been defined as being a conservative party, and that has been traditionally what it has been. Now, you say that you identify as a liberal, but you are a Republican. I would say that's more of a new development in the party. I'd say that it is, uh, you know, related to Trumpism, to MAGA, or Stop as that, Lauren man. calls it, the Globo Homo movement, which I will spit out my coffee. Oh, you think that's funny, do you? So you think, yeah. you know, someone's spouting anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, you know, which are right, you know, is, you know which, which, which were repugnantly homophobic, is, is funny. You're a cunt. When she said that, I, I find all this stuff quite hilarious sometimes. Uh, but with that being said, you know, if we're going to take the big tent party uh, approach, right, and we're going to bring in all of these people that are uh, of different uh, viewpoints like yourself, what what is this conservative party conserving? And how is it any different than, let's just say, being a liberal party from 10 years ago? Well, right now it's not conserving anything because they don't have any power because they lost elections. But I do want to uh, speak to John's point specifically in that he used the magic word, which is pandering. The left panders to the LGBT movement. Trump did advocate for LGBT policies. He- when? When? No. When? When? No, he, uh, he didn't. He said, um, he said that uh, we should advocate it for other countries but not America. And also he didn't do anything uh, that was um, pro LGBT plus anywhere. And also the conservative, the number of conservatives in America is roughly 34%. Uh, That's why it's important for either party to get moderates. That's why they pander to moderates. He did so by appointing the first openly gay member of the cabinet, which the left likes to forget about all the time. He did support this community. He just didn't do it in a way that was pandering. But again, like I, I'm a liberal because I believe in individual liberty, individual freedom. I'm very concerned with preserving specifically our First Amendment values and and all the amendments specifically. But the First Amendment is really my jam, which, again, does not allow for the state to legislate based on one religion's specific values. But if we- the one thing Lauren is right about. Okay, she's right about one thing. Uh, that's not Lauren. No, 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 I know that's not Lauren, right? Okay. But the one thing Lauren is right about is... Um, sorry, what's her name? Uh, uh, <laughs> um, Carolyn is... Um, she, 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 she's been the Libertarian Party. 
It's true. Yeah. She should be. If we want to talk about religion, we can talk about uh, a verse from the Bible, which is 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 through 2, which says, I urge then, first of all, the petitions, prayers, incessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and for those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. And I bring that up because that is the only place in the New Testament that really touches on the relationship of Christians to government. And what does it say? It that says is we not the true. The people in leadership. Holy shit. How how do you say that the only thing with relation to to government? No, that's not the only thing. Uh, 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 Jesus said that you should pay your taxes to the government. I believe in a part of the Bible, Jesus said that um, you're not supposed to. Well, I mean, Jesus fucking turned over shit in a bank. Um, uh, yeah, it was the money lenders. Of, of a, the Pharisees, um, but like also uh, uh, at at the very least, even though it wasn't directly related to the government, uh, uh, Jesus had the whole uh, thing about treating other people with different religions, you know, decently as as people because their lives are uh, important and should be cherished too, um, uh, and not to mention the the. The fact that how rich you are affects how much your um, each dollar counts when it comes to charity. A billionaire giving a dollar means far less than uh, a, a poor person giving a penny. That's the like. There's so many things, and obviously there's plenty of things in the Torah uh, as well. And it's just yeah, no. Sorry. <laughs> so that they may live peaceful and quiet lives in godliness and holiness. So what does that mean? It means that we should be working on electing a government that allows people to practice whatever religion they want and to live peaceful and quiet lives in godliness and holiness. And the only way that we can do that is by creating a broad coalition of voters who win elections. That's what we should be talking about, first and foremost, is how we win elections. Um, I, before we go, I'm going to go to John because John was John was sort of laughing during that. And so why are you laughing? I was I was humored by uh, the biblical substantiation for having more gay people in government. I, I just thought that was kind of funny. But uh, no, I, I don't think that like even you push back on what I had said about the. the I don't think that's what quite what she said, actually. I don't think she, she wasn't saying more. She wasn't using that b b biblical verse to, to um, justify more gays in, in government. She was saying that, you know, people should be left alone to, to live their lives. Yeah. <laughs> Pandering with, well, Trump appointed these people and he appointed these people. So he was actually like, you know, serving the interests of the community. It's interesting because, as you noted, the left will still ignore that because they control the narratives and they control the media. And so really, no matter what. Sorry. What? No, no, no. The the liberal the, the the conspiracy of the liberal media is a fucking lie. Then what the media isn't yeah. is fascist. Well, unless you watch Newsmax. Um, you know, I mean, fuck's sake. You have, you have fucking Fox News, Newsmax. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, there's another one, America something or other. Yeah, I mean the thing is. Um their business is first, and so they care about what's going to get them money. So they don't necessarily press things too far if they don't think uh, uh, it's going to get them money. Yeah. Um, okay, onwards. And yes, Freya did get the, the exact quote, give to Caesar was Caesar's and give to God was what is God's. Yeah. Trump does to pander to that however many percent of the, what is it, 3% of the voting demographic isn't actually going to serve interests. And I, I just don't think... Right, right, okay. Actually, the number of uh, people who did as LGBTQ in the United States is actually 12%. That's okay. a significant voting segment. Yeah think that the reason trump didn't win in 2020 assuming the election was totally legitimate was because oh for fuck's sake get... it's fine he's not directly saying it he's no but get the a question that implies get, get, get a specific fu answer get the fuck over it 
Okay. <laughs> he didn't uh, serve the interests of the LGBT community enough. I mean, Trump won in 2016 because of immigration, because of free trade, and because of... Fr sorry? F free. No, he believed in protectionism. He didn't believe in free yeah. trade. He believed in protectionism. He was always waff whining about China, you know, um, and going to, to war, uh, have a trade trade war with fucking China. He didn't believe in fucking free trade. Foreign policy. It wasn't at all because of uh, social issues as it pertains to, like, you know, the interests of, of gays and transgenders or what have you. Um, and then as far as the, the biblical substantiation for it, I mean, it's outlined, obviously, in, not only in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, like, very clearly that sexual immorality, which under the umbrella would be... Citation. Well, well, okay, we know about the Old Testament. But what about the New Testament? Nothing I can remember what Jesus said. Um, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's um, the only thing written in the New Testament is that um, from Jesus. It's one of Jesus' disciples says one thing. Um, again, and it, it's not even clear the exact nature of what's being talked about when it comes to sexual immor immorality or whatever. And like I said, it's, it's one of Jesus' disciples said something in the, the New Testament, but it's nothing that Jesus said because Jesus didn't say anything against LGBT stuff. No, he didn't. You're right. Homosexuality is wrong. Um, but you seem to be alluding to this idea of like the, the individual in, in their private home and things like that when you talk about, you know, people living in a free society to do what they want and not, you know, causing any problems. But what's interesting about that is that was the argument that during the, the movements in the 1960s and 70s, including the sexual revolution, that allowed a lot of the stuff to have a seat at the table, which ultimately would usurp power away from traditional Americans and traditional social conservatives. Right. Let me explain. Yeah, so all that sixties and seventies stuff against mm. segregation took it away from the white man. No, this is fucking no, fucking no. racist. He's, he's going down. He's going down the cultural Marxist route. Yeah. He well. I mean, not just that. This, he, yeah, that the yeah. cultural Marxism, but also the um, uh, white replacement, and um, uh, they're basically essentially that. They're trying to destroy the power the, of the, the white man. This is this which is, is something. Should be in, this is in, in this power. is anti-Semitic, cultural Marxist bullshit, which we've heard from the likes of Pat Buchanan for fucking decades. Yeah, and I just think that that's basically a myth because there's really no such thing as a private individual in in the privacy of their own home because you are one person, and so any. What? What? There's no such thing as an individual being alone in their own home. What? What? Yeah. As, as I said, the, the mask is off. Uh, the, the, these are fascists. Pure, yeah. I, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure if you're alone in, in your home, you're alone in your home. Any actions that you take in your house are ultimately going to reflect you and how you conduct yourself in the real world. And then it's also kind of misleading because people don't want to be confided in the privacy of their own home or what have you, because that almost presupposes that it's something to be ashamed of. And people don't like that. And so what happens is then they start taking to the streets and they start having parades and they start to infiltrate education. Right. Very clever, manipulative language there. Essentially, what you're yeah. saying is, is, is that gay people should have stayed, LGBTQ people should have stayed in the closet. Yes. And, and yeah, we, we shouldn't, we, we should sh be ashamed to yeah, exist. Yeah. We, we, sh we, we shouldn't be part of wider society. Yes. They start to infiltrate institutions such as the American Psychiatry Associ uh, Psychiatry Association. As I say, this is cultural Marxist bullshit. Yeah, no, and, and um, it's just essentially replacing uh, Jewish people with LGBTQ people, and and um, I'm sure he swaps Jews in. Uh, well, I mean, we, we already heard him mention the, uh, Jewish stuff, so yeah. Yeah. And then, what was it, 2015, June of 2015, the Supreme Court decided that five minutes ago uh, marriage can be between two men, and now we're here on the back foot with issues like Hey, maybe kids shouldn't be taking prenatal hormones. Or uh... can, can we jump into that? Kids are what? taking prenatal fucking hormones. Prenatal hormones? Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, when I am an em when I was an embryo, my mom gave me tons of. 
prenatal hormones against my will. So I think I think we should strip mothers' um, uteruses of any ability to provide embryos with prenatal hormones because they're dangerous. The prenatal hormones, they're dangerous. They're killing us all. Oh, dear, I, wait, I want, Elijah, yeah, I want to jump in there because <coughs> I want you, like, he, John just fundamentally misrepresented something I said because I specifically chose Timothy or 1 Timothy 2 verse 1 and 2 because it has nothing to do with homosexuality. That's why I specifically chose that passage. It has to do with the relationships Christians have with their government. Now, if we want to talk about how the Bible deals with homosexuality, what I would like to focus on in the fa- is the fact that there are multiple different arguments for different interpretations of the Bible. I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Bible scholar. But I do know that there are multiple different interpretations for that. And instead of getting into the nitty gritty about what it says in that area, I want to focus on the fact that, again, this is an argument for the First Amendment, for religion to not be the the dictator of a political movement. If you want to talk about these issues in your church, do talk about them in your church. If you want to exclude people from your church, fine. If you want to exclude gays from getting married in your church, that is a conversation between you and your church elders. This is a conversation about a religion. political movement. I think that all the arguments against the acceptance of homosexuality within the right are completely secular. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's totally secular to be like, the Bible says it's wrong, so we should make government policy to outlaw total secular argument. What the f- No! I'm sorry, I have had some dumb ass things in my time. Oh my god. But that really takes the fucking biscuit. Oh my god. <laughs> what the f- Fucking fuck! What secular arguments are there against LGBTQ people? None. It's all based on religious bigotry. Yeah, um... It's all based on, you know, some crusty old book you reckon is is, is the word of your mystical, you know, non-existent sky daddy, and it says that, you know, supposedly that, well, your interpretation says that, you know, LGBTQ people, bad. You know? Well, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the I'm only sorry. way you can, you can make the argument that it's secular involves you making a presupposition that a, a conspiratorial... Uh, uh, work is afoot to try to infiltrate every science, uh, uh, scientific aspect of society, uh, and that is a pre- that has to be a presupposition because there are no facts behind it. You're just saying that that's the case, and uh, but like all of it's rooted in very religious views. Like it's not a secular. There's no good secular argument. There are a lot of terrible ones, but there's no good secular argument. It may ha- just so happen to appeal to the to the base of that movement as Christians, but I think that Lauren and I could uh, recite several arguments that are maybe even more compelling from a completely secular perspective. Let me, sure, go, go on, ahead. Go, go, on, and, go on, go on, go, go on. Ahead. Guess what? He doesn't. Let me and I hope you'll do it. I've got all these good arguments. You no, know, I think it's really yeah. funny that she's quoting scripture as a liberal. <laughs> thinking that she can use it against us as Christians. Um, You know, it's like, oh, it doesn't apply to me, but maybe it'll work on you. And guess what? It doesn't work. Playing on our Christian compassion and making us be tolerant and acceptive of all this diversity, you know? Uh, (laughs) Oh, I'm a Christian. Uh, Quoting the Bible, (laughs) that won't work on me. I'm Christian. Uh, Oh, dear. (laughs) She quoted a passage from the Bible. You know, which goes against you being a hateful cunt. Yeah? Yeah, and, yeah, and has, but, she, but you're she, Christian. You're she, 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 the Bible. She's sitting there saying, you know, you know, um, you know, <laughs> lecturing us about being, you know, compassionate and tolerant. Hey, I tell you what, Jesus, you know, lectured fucking people about being compassionate and tolerant. You know? Yeah. You know? Uh, you're a uh, Christian. The whole fucking religion is based on... Chris, you know, Jesus Christ, you know, this is why it's called Christianity, you stupid, dumb, Nazi cunt. Yeah. You know what that's left us with? Transgender pedophiles on Twitter saying that your daughter asked for it. Your little girl isn't actually a princess. She asked for it. What? What? What the fuck? I... 
No, no one, no one's saying any of this except like it's it, it's all in your, people. It's all in your fucking mind, my darling. It when I abuse her, that is where we're at. So you're throwing scripture at me as a liberal is not going to work. You cannot play the Christian compassion card on us anymore. We are standing. We are taking a stand for social social conservatism because it matters. Social issues matter and using yeah, god's yeah, word the bible matter. doesn't matter social issues matter i am a god-fearing christian that makes sure to not follow the bible you can't trick me with the bible i'm gonna i'm gonna follow conservatism my true religion sort of manipulating it to try to get christians to agree with you is absolutely subversive and that's what we're sh oh, sorry sorry yeah, sorry. Christianity is based on the fucking Bible. She quoted yeah. a passage from the fucking Bible, and you say that's subversive. You really? Yeah, it's subversive to use the Bible on Christians. Fuck. Oh. Christians aren't supposed to follow the Bible. They're yeah. supposed to follow the the writings that came afterwards. You know, the ones that that have uh, Satan in, inhabit the body of a snake. And uh, uh, as in the Garden of Eden, which is a, a post uh, Christianity uh, uh, writing, it's not even in anywhere in the Bible, but um, that's more important than what's actually said in the Bible. Um, I was going to say, um, uh, just look at Blair White. She looks absolutely fed up. Well, I mean, the, I almost, the person I, in the I, upper left-hand corner uh, looks like she was going to laugh at, at uh, looks like she was about to laugh at, like, half this shit. Uh, but the, th the thing is, I, it almost makes you feel sorry for Blair. I said, almost. <laughs> We're struggling with in our party is subverters. You know, how many kids saw Blair White, you know, giving one of her videos? You know, I know Trump is a cash cow. I know people love to talk about him to get their popularity. But how many children saw her and look calling Blair White out for being a grifter? <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, she yeah, is. Yeah, but she, like she is, but um, uh, but she's probably calling Blair White a uh, uh, pedophile because she is that level of hateful. Looked at her and said, you know what? She looks really good. I could do that too. And started transitioning. This is about the children. We, they are coming for our kids and we are at a point now. <laughs> They're coming for our kids. This is why we kick kids out of our homes. If they happen to, to we find out they're LGBTQ yes, yeah, yeah. because they're because uh, 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 they're coming for our kids who we like to <laughs> abandon. Osborne has just just realised uh, that she's the child catcher from Chi Chi Bang Bang. Oh, for fuck. Wait, what? oh fuck! I don't know that one. Uh, it's, it's a children's book written by Ian Fleming. Gotcha. The guy who wrote the Bond books. Um, uh, <laughs> never mind. Um, that joke went down like a lead fucking balloon. But anyways, um, fuck it. Uh, we're coming for your children. <sighs> oh, dear me. <laughs> Uh, I mean, can I just say I I love watching this for the first time um, with you because it's it's entertaining just to to hear how horrible people are willing to get um, because this isn't the average person. This is a special kind of conservative. Well, we're going to have to take a stand. Will the party go? The way of the LGBTQ. Will the party, you know, we already have a transgender man, woman, it, I don't know, in California. It. It. Yeah, no, oh, they, oh, they do yeah, the dehumanization uh, thing. Osmo, you're an it. Um, I mean. I'm an it. We're, we're, we're it. Yeah, well, yeah. like I said, it's, it's, um, uh, dehumanization. They, I know, when I know, they I know. do it. They do it to, yeah, to I know it's so that we're not human anymore. But yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's exactly as I said. It's othering dehumanization. Um, yeah, I mean, this Lauren. It's woman, the stages before uh, accepting the death of those people. 
California, running the Federation for Republican Women. You know, are we going to let this stand or are we going to choose to stay with the nuclear family and support the nuclear family? Because from what I've seen from these... I wish that the, there was a nuclear f uh, f f f family for you. Kaboom. <laughs> That's all I'm going to... Harsh. Uh, in Minecraft. Yes, in Minecraft. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> These LGBTQ activists, such as Rick, Richard Grinnell, who's an absolute pervert, he refuses to stand up for transgenders in the military, against transgenders in the military. He refuses to stand <laughs> and make a public statement that, hey, men shouldn't be in women's bathrooms. That's because they're bought sold and paid for by these lgbt donors who have seen an opportunity trump was a cash cow oh he yeah was. All you talk money. about him and you are um you know had a different look or whatever people would throw themselves at you because it's like oh look how inclusive we are but we're sacrificing everything and when it comes down to it i choose the life preserving the life of little children who are 15 percent of them are growing up identifying as lgbtq um and I don't believe that figure. I don't believe that figure. Um, it's... I mean, LGBT, uh, fifteen percent. I mean, she's probably highballing. Um, and the other thing but... is trans trans in the military. So, so what? Trans trans people can't also be murdering bastards for the military industrial complex. Yeah. Well, the thing is, they need to. It's. For similar reasons to segregation and the military, they... Yeah, yeah, I know, but I'm just making the point. Anyways. Yeah, no, um, I, I just think it's funny how much money uh, LGBT peop uh, uh, plus groups have. Yeah. Because uh, last I checked, you know, um, especially trans people in America are the poorest group of people in America. And... Um, uh, th there are statistics on that and um, you know the fact that you can get kicked out of a job for uh, being lesbian gay or bi or just whatever other reason people might be uncomfortable about your existence it just um, causes a lot of LGBTQ people to be uh, on the lower end of income mm. not the higher end transgender uh and we should not be giving a spotlight to or a platform to people who operate in a lifestyle where 40 percent of them end up attempting suicide 40 percent of uh, trans people end up committing suicide you know thanks to the likes of you well um here's the thing it's 40 percent of uh trans people have have attempted suicide who have been either put in conversion therapy or otherwise rejected by their parents and society. Yeah, that, it's that, that um, figure... down to like five to ten percent, I think, uh, if trans people are accepted. Which means, if you accept trans people, there's a significantly lower suicide rate if you accept trans people by their identity. And so, it's almost like there are direct causal factors to. Uh, preventing suicide and 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 the death of of trans people you know eventually uh you know one in four children growing up struggling with tq gender dysphoria end up with depression drug abuse i think it's 80 yeah. percent of men because they're marginalized by fucking society by the fucking likes of you yeah poor people uh are always more likely mm. to be um uh, do what they can to survive. Have a higher risk of HIV. You know, why would I support that lifestyle? Um, why no, would I even... That. Lifestyle. 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 It's not a fucking choice. You're born yeah. trans. Yeah? It's yeah, not a fucking trans, lifestyle. You're born gay. You're born asexual. Jesus you're born Christ. lesbian. It's just... It's all... I think this 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 woman has mistaken the 2020s of the 19 fucking 50s, okay? Yeah? I mean, oh, is it the given, by the way she talks, I, it wouldn't surprise me if she still considers this the 1850s. Yeah. Or at the very least wants it back there. That's, Make excuses for that I wanna, lifestyle I wanna Blair, or try to use I wanna give Blair a chance to respond to, respond to your statements real fast because I know Blair has, has a hard out. Um, we haven't heard from Blair 
just on the on the statement of Lauren said Lauren is talking about you know the subversion in the party the idea that you're that your choice well, you're transitioning well, before I, um, you know I just want to specifically address um, what Lauren said about children maybe watching my YouTube videos and thinking that they can be like me or transition or whatever I don't really know how much you know about me but I'm probably the most vocal anti children transitioning person on the internet well she certainly very vocal yeah. against against uh, tra uh, trans kids that that we know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's what I'm. Right. It's what well, I, I, I let you, you speak. The best thing you can do for us is I, grow out your mustache and tell people not to live like you. That is. <sighs> <sighs> yeah. No. Right. Right. Uh... right. If Blair hasn't grasped by now that she isn't welcome amongst the G in the GOP. She'll never grasp it. Well, it's not even about grasping it. I don't, I don't think she These people um, cares. Blair, Blair, these people they want to wipe you from fucking existence. Okay? Yeah? Get it through your head. You can't play the good trans. Okay? You know, yeah. they don't think any trans person is good, no matter how much you suck up to the to, 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 to yep. the far right. That's the best thing that you can do to help us because Christ you are not love. helping. Christ love, wafting off Lauren. Christ love. Go at it, guys. <laughs> I think actually okay. to close on the biblical point. Um, I, like, the first I thing I did want to say is the vindication point. of Lauren. Yeah, it's, it's actually that's the other point I was going to make. Um, I mean, okay. Blair hasn't really forced herself into this conversation, right? As I said, she doesn't push back. All these people have just been talking over her and she's, she's let that happen. Believe me, I've seen Blair, yeah. you know, in debates before. She can be a motor mouth. No? Someone yeah. has to ask, what the fuck is going on with her? Well, I mean, it, it's a, a lot of... I think, I, I think Blair White genuinely doesn't know what to do here. And I, uh, I think um, I think Blair White is probably feeling extremely rejected, but that was always going to fucking happen, as I said, you know. Yeah, but I mean, we, I, we, I we, we've think... been, you know, fuck me. I have told enough fucking conservative fucking trans women. Conservatives don't fucking like you. Yeah. Yeah. Most uh. conservatives don't like you. Comes very clearly, and the fact that we have a liberal on here who is personally a liberal and ideologically a liberal, though feels as though she can manifest that by voting for Republicans. And so I think that really speaks to how far our party has deviated in the last 50 years to where now there are people who are personally liberal who feel as though their views can be reflected by voting for Republicans. And to close on the biblical topic, there's this misconception that like Jesus just said that we should be like vaguely nice to each other. As far as judgment goes, we are called as Christians not to judge people individually. Like we cannot look at you and make a moral declaration like you are good or you are bad. That's not our position. However, we are called quite explicitly to judge the actions of people so as to maintain a moral and civilized society. And so we need to keep that social pressure on people like you actually can't behave in this way or that way. And that's how we maintain a civilized and virtuous society. What the fuck? Uh, yeah, I, I honestly... All right, so, 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 so essentially what he's saying is, I can't judge you for being a homosexual, but I can hate on those gays. Yeah, he, he, well, can't, he, can, he can't, judge, things... can't judge an individual, but he can hate on groups. Yeah, fuck me. What a fucking fascist cunt. Yeah, I, I mean, there's, uh, the whole point of the, the good Samaritan, um, fucking parable is about hey this person is someone who you think is like just helping someone out the, like it's not even about knowing the person and knowing every aspect about them it's about like people deserving to live because they were born there's so much and we are called throughout the bible to do that quite explicitly okay blair can you please respond all right to all well, i never that? finished crazy. my point so i would just like to say as I said earlier, whether anyone on this panel likes it or wants to acknowledge it, there is a really huge chunk of LGBT people who are very much against ideas like children transitioning, like uh, trans women in biological women's sports. Not true. It's a minority. 
Yeah, um, and, and all of the ideas that are, you know, hot talking points, but they're very real at the same time. So um, I don't think many kids would look at my YouTube videos and want to do anything like me because I explicitly have been very known for saying that it's not a glamorous lifestyle, that it's difficult and that children shouldn't be out allowed to transition because it can often be a mistake that really damages their life. So I don't know. I just felt like that was a false premise. And again, I. I would like to agree with Carlin. It, on wasn't, that. I, it wasn't a false premise. Like I said, I if you want to help us, tell people I not to live like you. That they is, mute Blair White's mic. That's that's a soft, that's somewhat well. You could say it's subtle, but basically what she's saying is drop dead. Did they mute Blair White's mic. No, I don't think they did. They're just everyone's talking over her. Because she's not pushing back. That people would watch my videos and come to that conclusion when I say not to, and I advocate against it. I think that there are a lot of trans people online that you could argue. Maybe someone looks at their videos, children, and, and wants to do a certain thing, but I'm very much against it. If anything, people who support children transitioning or kids who want to transition hate me. So um, I also would like. Yes, Blair, because you should fucking remember what it's like to have gender dysphoria when you were a kid. And you did have it when you were a kid. And don't deny you didn't have it when you were a kid. Well, um, you know, the thing is, considering how she young, doesn't, considering how that, young she, she, no, but Blair White has gender dysphoria. That's fucking obvious, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and no, hold on, no, hold on, no, hold on, no, hold, no, hold, no. hold on. What I am saying is, right? I remember what the trauma was 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 like, and you know, sure, it's it's uncomfortable because it it's, it can be quite triggering and traumatic for me to remember that. But at the same time, weirdly, it also helps me to be more empathetic to a lot of young trans people right because i was there you see and that's the problem with blair you know she she yep. does she, well, she 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 you know her and the likes of rose of fucking dawn they don't you know they they seem to block this out you know well they, they, that would require for them to recall and process that and make good decisions on that would require a sense of self-reflection that i don't think blair white or rose of dawn have or uh, for that matter, a lot of conservative people, I, I don't think, have that. Not, not, sorry, I should be clear. A lot of the um, popular conservative uh, uh, talking people don't. But it, the other the other thing is, it's it's the the older trans women who had to go through the rigmarole of you know the, the bad old days when psychiatrists you know really did treat us like freaks, you know. Um, and it's like, well, they had to go through all that trauma themselves and they had to have surgery and, you know, whatever else. And in walks, you know, non-binary people saying, no, fuck that. And they don't like it. And it's all sour grapes. And, you know, the other thing I think with, it could be with Blair, it, it's like, well, I was prevented from transitioning when I was a kid. So all other trans kids should be prevented from transitioning as well. Yeah. There is always that attitude with, with, you know, I mean, there's a trans woman I know, well, her stage name is Faye Presto, and she is so full of fucking sour grapes, you know? Well, yeah, about, but about, I mean, about, also about, there's, um, you know, about, if it about, doesn't, about she's thought. already transitioned, so she doesn't need it. So what happens to other trans people? Yeah, she's putting up the ladder matter. behind her, yeah. Like to say, it's normal. That's normal. That's normal. That's not normal. That's not I do agree with Carlin in the sense, um, that, you know, if you guys do want to wield power and enact the socially conservative changes that you want, you do have to win elections and telling people that they don't have a place to vote in your direction or that they don't have a place in your party isn't the way to win elections. So I guess at the top... Funny enough, Blair is actually right. <laughs> yeah. But I, mean, I, I kind of... There's, I, there's not enough conservative people... I, to I, win yeah, any election I, but I kind of think that you know Lauren should, should carry on carry on Lauren and, and, and John should carry on you know you know because it's going to kill the Republican Party as Lauren admitted they're losing they're losing the, the, the war as she would put it yeah you're losing you know and um, you know yeah. long may that continue until you are completely and utterly fucking defeated the topic is the future of the right I think the future of the right's already settled um it's Trump, and that's not an ideology that tells people they're not allowed to come over. If anything, it's an ideology that welcomes people to come over. So, okay, it's so kind of already jump, over, actually. Before we jump any further, I want to let you guys know something. 
It's very important. As you can see, a lot of people in this country disagree right now. We cannot seem to come to common ground on a lot of things, which is why people see the instability in the stock market. We had things like the power grid fail here in Texas, which is why I want to tell you about my Patriot Supply, which you can find at preparewithelijah.com. No, you know, no, right now, no, no matter what you no, voted no. for Trump, that coalition sit on the political spectrum. Trump may or may not have touched on this issue either to either side very much, but they still fundamentally sit at the center economically and authoritatively socially. And so if you look at where those people poll on issues pertaining to you know LGBT issues, uh, they're all basically socially conservative. And so maybe Trump didn't come out and support those or, or be as against those as he should have been to really like wield those people in. But basically, it's ambivalent as far as that's concerned. And so what we do know is that Trump taking time to address those issues, thinking he's going to win those people over, hasn't actually worked. I mean, even his support in 2016 or 2020 with LGBT people was not like statistically significant, nor was there a statistic improvement or statistically. Actually, that's wrong. Sadly, <laughs> the, LGBT yeah, okay. vote, the LGBT key vote for, for Trump actually went up in 2020. Oh, God. It just so happened that more LGBT key people voted for, for, for Biden because, you know, let's be honest the vast majority of lgbtq people have, have the common sense to realize you know that um you know if they'd voted for for, 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 for you know if it, well they if trump had got yeah. been re-elected you know they were going to be persecuted so you know biden was the only common sense choice significant improvement and so when any political operation is happening you know you have a certain volume of discussion and resources that you can expend on different things and so if you're going to waste those resources which it is a waste on people who aren't going to vote for you anyway because they've basically been brainwashed into hating you because we don't control the narratives and we don't control the institutions we haven't been brainwashed into fucking hating you you hate us so yeah. a natural re natural reaction is to say fuck you buddy well, it, and it's yeah, but, hard to it's hard to like someone who says that you don't deserve to live yeah. by being born. You deserve you need to work to earn your right to live. Yeah, we've got to live uh, live our lives the way Johnny Doyle says that we should live our lives for us to live. No, fuck that. And the the place that you want to be pouring those resources into would be on the issues that you won the election based on in the first place, which would be immigration, which would be free trade, and which would be foreign policy. It has very little to do with appealing to different uh, interest groups and hoping that they come over, whether that's you know black people or gay people or transgender people. These are all things that Jared Kushner lobbied for because oh, he thought God. that they would be effective in creating the sort of big tent movement. Which I oh, yes, of course, it's the Jews' fault. Right, okay. Yeah, but also, you know, he doesn't want the Republican Party to pander to black people, which means... He wants the Republican Party to be a pure white Christian party that's that's heavily authoritarian is what he wants. Yeah, couldn't couldn't be anything that that's even mm. more clear about it with the anti-Semitic mm. dog whistles. Couldn't just mm. like uh, add a little bit more. Why? <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised he doesn't go full Nazi too, salute too much at throughout this the administration, point. But uh, that also wasn't why he was elected in the first place anyways. Because if you look, even demographically, the people who are most likely to vote for Trump are also most likely to be socially conservative. So it's very clear that if we want to keep Trumpism going, if we want to keep the Trump train going, then the way to do that isn't by appealing to these issues. It's by appealing to the issues that got him into power in the first place. And then when we take the country back, then, you know, we can have these other debates once we actually wield power. But right now we're just getting totally crushed. So we don't have time to waste resources on anything that hasn't been proven to be effective. Carlin? Can I talk? Oh, Blair, Blair has her hand up. Blair has talked less. I was just going to say, I actually completely agree with uh, John that pandering to minority groups definitely didn't do Trump any favors. I think that the media completely okay. controls the narrative. It doesn't matter. What yeah. the fuck? See, yeah. what it is is her her um, conservative party. Yeah, she just uh, her wants pay, to agree with yeah, them. Yeah, this is the line, her pay mar conservative paymasters at the Heritage Foundation, you know, want, wanted to trot out. Or he could save, like, I don't know, a little person of color who's also trans out of a burning building and the media would not care. Um, but that's all the more reason to, I don't think you have to pander. I think you just don't have to try to exclude people. I think that that just loses votes. 
Um, and so, again, it just goes back to you. You guys can't wield any of this power you say you want to wield if you're not going to win elections. You're just not. And um, I don't know. I just think it's it's just kind of silly to go on about this argument that certain people need to be excluded because all it's doing is telling people not to vote. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, the argument that, that it's bad to exclude people says Blair White, the person who wants to exclude anyone who's trans, who's different. Oh, no, oh, you're, you're saying exclusion is bad. Why don't you apply that, Blair White? Why yeah. don't you apply that to anything else? Yes, that's a good point. I actually agree with that. If, if it keeps going back to, like, we need to win, we need to win, saying you can't vote for us or you don't have a place in the party isn't, I don't see the winning tactic of that. I mean, I don't think that the social conservative movement is going to necessarily grow stronger to the point where you wouldn't need. And also what you said about um, LGBT votes not having a statistical raise, I believe they did double, obviously it's still a small community, but they did, it did double from 2016. So clearly there is a shift happening. I think it was 14% in 2016 and probably like 1% every other election before that. And it was like 28% in 2020. So yeah, you know, minority groups don't necessarily win elections now, over time, they very well could. Can I just, uh, let, me, let, me, let me move to Lauren. 900,000 votes. Yeah. 900,000 mm -hmm. people nationally came out uh, from the LGBTQ community and voted for President Trump. We've done the math. Um, it was absolutely not beneficial for all the money we spent when we could have been going after the working class, the white working class, the Christian. Oh, the white working class. Well, yeah, uh, not, not, her, not, not, her not nice little uh, anti-Semitic dog whistle. Well, I mean, well, that's a fascist. That is an absolute fascist dog whistle. And also, yeah, nine hundred thousand votes is actually quite substantial. There have been some very close elections in the United States. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gore, Bush, um, Kennedy, um, uh, the the Nixon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, just dismissing the lgbtq vote but of course she would wouldn't she um well she's also dismissing uh the votes of black people or the votes of well anybody she doesn't really who isn't a white conservative christian yeah working class uh the I do agree. Religiously, uh, yeah, we spent way too many resources. Um, so the lie that we have to be a big tent in order to win and we have to be uh, inclusive. You know, like I said, there is a party for free market capitalism and transgenderism and liberalism. That's called the Libertarian Party. Why don't you join them? We do not need you. You are doing nothing but hurting us. You are hurting the Christian vote by creating a platform for yourself saying, this is Trump's, Trumpism. This is Trumpism. You know, we should have never glorified this in the first place while we are losing everything. On it's funny that she's only interested in the Christian vote, not the Jewish vote. Or, well, you know, <coughs> which you know, yeah. choose a statistically, uh, 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 you know, make up. You know, good um, a, a large segment of of uh, American society. Oh, and of course, you know you. Well, yeah, but Orthodox Jews are are the only people. Well, mostly, most of the people who vote conservative are Orthodox. No, but what I'm what what I'm saying is she's she's going to harp on about the religious vote. Yeah, she's going on about the Christian vote. I'm saying, yeah. Well, there are other religious vote uh, religious groups in the United States. Yeah. Yeah, but she hates those. Yeah, exactly. That's the point I'm trying to make. Oh. Social issues we lose that. every single time. You know, we are influencing, you know, public opinion matters. And we are influencing our own elected officials to not take a stand on issues such as transgenderism, uh, LGBTQ education, drag queen story hour. They are saying nothing. We have. I told you, conservatives really do have a problem with drag queen um, story hour. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? It's just a guy wearing a dress and makeup. What the fuck? What's wrong with that? As I said, in you know, in this country, we've had a long tradition of pantomime dames. Yeah, you, know, you take kids to see the fucking pantomime. I got taken to see a pantomime when I was a kid. I fucking hated it, but you know, pantomime's yeah. not my kind of thing. But you know, I, I, you know, many kids enjoy it. 
Yeah, for fuck's yeah. sake created a cowardly uh, elected class within our party, you know, so it is not helping us. There is absolutely no electoral benefit. There's no social benefit, um, you know, and if, like I said, if you are a gunslinging, freedom-loving person, absolutely, we love... Freedom-loving person. But we need, we need the gunslinging, freedom-loving people who are against the, the scary spice lasers from the Jews. Freedom I mean, loving. Like that, I mean, that's Free, the freedom, freedom loving, but the, not the freedom to be trans, or, or not, to be, not the freedom to be trans, not the freedom to be Jewish, not the freedom, not the freedom to, to, to be, be born black. with a different color skin. Yeah. No, the important thing is the freedom of gun loving mm. Christians and going against the gun loving people of every other religion or uh, uh, skin color. Look. I'm still American. I still think guns are cool. Please don't hate me. <laughs> um, well, no. What she's really saying is, uh, uh, freedom, freedom, uh, freedom, loving gun, 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 gun whatever, uh, toting. Um, uh, you know, basically, what she's saying is that you know, Christians should be able to go around and bully, you know, other groups, uh, you know, armed. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, the, basically every policy that the NRA has had um, has been, you know, with a focus on uh, uh, most NRA policies are racist. And they... Yeah, yeah. The NRA, the NRA were, were, weren't so, uh, weren't so, uh, so, so hot on, on, on anti-gun control uh, when the Black Panthers started arming themselves. Yeah, and yeah, they all of a the, sudden they, they, they had all, a, they all had of a, a huge problem with open carry then too. Yeah, all of a sudden they were in favor of gun control. Yeah. Yeah, strange. Yeah. Funny how that works. Yeah. Love to have you come vote for us. But should you be having a say in influencing the party? Should you have um, an opinion uh, that, you know, like Jared Kushner was the one who did push the LGBTQ agenda, mass migration. Um, and those were the things that, you know, no, yeah, mass that's at, that is even more anti-Semitic. The mass my uh, my uh, immigration, you know, that's yeah. that's the great replacement conspiracy, isn't it? Yep. Mass migration was something that Trump addressed in 2016. That's what got the white working class out to vote for him. You know, so there are plenty of votes out there for us to get, but it doesn't come with compromising. We don't get those 15 million unregistered Christian voters to. Get, read, get them registered to vote and out to vote for us by glorifying the LGBT community. Congress shall make weird. no law respecting an establishment of religion. I don't know why Lauren's so against the First Amendment. I think the First Amendment's pretty great. I also think the Second Amendment's pretty great, too, because it protects the first. <laughs> and these are the things that we should actually be conserving, and we can't do that if we can't win elections. The fact of the matter is, Lauren, that every single problem you have with the LGBT movement right now, from, from giving hormones to kids, medical transition, whatever, this was all caused by the right losing the culture war 30 years ago when they tried to legislate their religion. That Yeah, and the fact is that the far, the far right in America still haven't grasped they lost the culture war. They've lost it. Well, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't even, like, I hate, I mean, even the culture war is just, like, uh, in terms of the, the framing of things is just, it's just gross, because it's not, it's just, it's really just people cha moving away from fascism and more towards the uh, aqu uh, equitability, or basically equal opportunity of people and the ability of people to uh, be themselves uh, if they're not harming any other people by being themselves. That is why we're currently experiencing this today. The only way to come back and conserve whatever it is you want to conserve is by winning elections. And the fact of the matter is, it's not just people like Blair who vote based on LGBT issues. I am straight as an arrow. I'm married to a dude. Between the two of us, I'm the one that's actually married with the family. And so I will say that I absolutely will not vote for a party that treats LGBT people like they are subhuman. I. Well, why did you vote GOP then? Why do you support <laughs> Yeah, that? I know. You you say you will not vote for a party which treats LGBTQ people as subhuman. You fucking well did. F 
fucking hell. I thought that what John, you know, Johnny Boyce down there says, you know, about, um, you know, all, all arguments against uh, LGBTQ people are secular was stupid and dumb. Yeah. But that, ha- that takes, no, that takes the biscuit. <laughs> She doesn't even realize, you know, and and I, uh, she, 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 even though she seems relatively intelligent, I, I, she's probably in, in in absolute fucking denial that she's actually, you know, by supporting the Republican Party, actually helping LGBTQ people being treated as a fucking human. Huh? Um. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, uh, she is good at debating, and I think she is more focused on, um winning debates than she is on actual policy sort of and she seems to have a centrist attitude in that i'll vote for the party that isn't the winning the majority of votes just to vote for them because if i get if i get everywhere in the center then i must be the most correct it's not how that works i won't do it Part of the reason that Trump won my vote is because he does not care. He promotes people. He doesn't promote... You're right. He doesn't care about LGBTQ rights. That's why he was rolling back all the fucking legal protections LGBTQ people had. And they weren't exactly massive in in the United States, I have to say. So... Promotes sexualities. Uh Uh, Okay, so first of all... You're using issues again on me that you don't apply for yourself. So uh, Dr. Carl here was the first one to celebrate me being Carlin. From twin- Carlin. Banned-, banned from Twitter. Um, she was so excited to see that my voice had been silenced. So freedom of speech for the... No, you can go to parlor. <laughs> you Sorry. Sh- the, yeah. the guy yeah, looks like he's face palming in the, the, the far left. Sorry. Uh, you you write to free speech. You don't have a right to free speech with Twitter, okay? If you if you if you if you contravene TOS, Twitter has every right to throw you off, and you probably well did, Lauren. You know, yeah, yeah. But the, the thing is, this is this is after this is um, a half an hour after she said that Blair that she had a problem with Blair White having a platform. Yeah, well exactly. The fucking, you know, hypocrisy. She's not pro free speech. She wants free, no, uh, but she wants she wants, she free, wants speech. free speech for uh uh Republicans and no speech for anyone else. No, she wants she wants speech for white Christian gun owning Americans but not for me um absolutely so you know disregard that opinion um well, i celebrated that you were banned on twitter I, I also, because you repeatedly I, I, tweeted I that my say, husband should be deported lauren and he's now a legal I'm, alien. I'm thrilled. no he's your not husband, he has a permanent green card i am now from, thrilled that i don't have to hear you call for my husband to be deported on twitter yeah. who has had a permanent green card for the last six years he came into our country illegally. He broke our laws. He did and not do it correctly. And then married an American. He, 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 he managed to get in our country. Therefore, it must be illegal. It's not how laws work. It's not how laws work. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I have a husband and you don't, Lauren. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, Lauren only believes in God's law. And God's law is Lauren's law. <laughs> look. Look. Yeah. I get whispered to God by God to hold my guns and shoot every immigrant that comes to this country. I I support the word of God's voice that I hear every night when I go to sleep telling me that the white race should destroy Yeah no I can't I can't even do it. I can't even say more of this. It's so God fucking awful. The fuck is wrong with her? <laughs> You're welcome. Hey, really, anyone want to respond? You guys can keep going. I'm keep going. <laughs> Blair's like, I'm. Oh, okay. you want me to keep going? Oh well, you know, I'm I'm in early recovery, so you know, I've only been clean three years. Uh, you know, myself getting in toxic relationships is what kept you know me relapsing. So you know, I'm just doing it with wisdom this time. I'm dating. I'm, but my intention is to get right. So she's essentially swapped one drug for another. That's what she's done, and it's funny. Well, it's it's always funny how how um I mean, give you another example. 
I've used this example before in conversations. There's a guy called Joey Carbstrong. That's his online name. I don't think that's his real name. He was a vegan, right? And he's a really militant vegan, a really annoying militant vegan, right? And his backstory is that he used to be involved in, gun, uh, in gang culture down in Australia. And he got, obviously, he ended up in prison. And usually when people end up in that sort of circumstances, they have a moment of clarity, they, they find God and get religion, right? No, Joey found veganism and has been shoving it down our throats ever since. And it is the same with, you know... Uh, you know, former former sort of uh, alcoholics or heroin users who become born again Christians. They always seem. Well, to I become... mean, Alcoholics Anonymous doesn't help, given that that is a um, conservative Christian uh, movement that is supported by. Uh, I think it's still supported in in a lot of places by state policy. It's actually a, a real problem. Get married and have children eventually, but I certainly will not be marrying an illegal alien uh, to give him his green card. So, you know, uh, I hopefully will <laughs> so find, an American, I will, I, I will I find an American man. I will. I will find an American man. You'll be pleased to know we had several interviews with ICE, and they 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 blessed our marriage. Really, even though he was an illegal and didn't yeah. come the right way. That's crazy. Green card, honey. Green wow, card. we're gonna have to we're gonna have to reinvestigate. Let's go, let's go to Blair. Yeah, you know what? Here's the here's the thing though. Like we can keep talking about my husband, all she wants to talk about it. But the fact of the matter is, my husband ain't gonna win us an election. Votes are going to win us elections. I don't know why we're so focused on these issues that are driving people away from voting for things like conserving the First Amendment, conserving the Second Amendment. That's really what I would like to have the conversation. You don't even like the First Amendment. You don't even like it. Matter. So well, why are you why are you? Uh... Blair wanted to chime in. Let's, let's cut. I'm, like guys, I'm gonna cut you guys off. I'm cutting you off, Blair. I, I, I want to. Blair, let me hear you, what you're gonna say. <laughs> oh, I was just. Oh, say, I woke uh, up now. Uh, <laughs> I think that there's a little bit of a tit for tat here, but I will say, Lauren, um, you said that Carlin was celebrating you being the platform. I did see that, and I personally disagree with Carlin for doing that. I didn't. I don't like people being, being banned off Twitter. Do Right, you don't like people being banned, and you're you, you're going to say you're free speech. Well, then why do you block me, Blair? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, she blocked. Blair her blocked you. Yeah. Wait, now now I have to look. Did Blair block me too? I want to know. I need to know. Platforms. Um, but I will say, you opened this up with saying that I shouldn't be given a platform and that I shouldn't have a say in the party or in, you know, so no, she I think there's a little bit of it yet. to go around. I think everyone should probably just respect each other a little more. No, I didn't say you should be deplatformed from your voice. I was saying that you should not have a platform within a party who stands for <laughs> Semantics. I'm not saying you're supposed to be deplatformed. I'm saying that you should have been deplatformed. Talk about semantics. I mean, you know, she's complaining about, you know, her right to freedom of speech was infringed upon by Twitter banning her, right? Well, you know, and yet she's saying that Blair should be given a platform in the GOP. Well, it's up to, you know, it's up to the GOP to whether, whether, you know, they give Blair a platform. And, you know, it's up to Twitter whether they give you uh, a platform, Lauren, and they've decided not to because you are a repugnant Nazi cunt marriage because that is just opposing itself you know it makes no sense also when you cannot deny that your people are the ones that are reading your you people you people othering yeah. again dehumanizing again dressed yeah. in drag to kids at my, our taxpayers expense and i'm just curious to what extent <laughs> am i forced am i going to be forced to participate in your fetish or delusion while oh. Mm. They, they, the problem is they learned those words in high school, uh, but they didn't actually learn what they meant, and they, they didn't learn any element of understanding. No, them. but that's the whole throw fetish, them out around uh, like buzzwords. Telling, telling trans people that they're acting out their fantasies and their fetishes is is something turfs do. Yeah, I know, and I mean turfs don't understand those words either because uh they're they're principled in the scientific method and 
they can't deal with that. So they just mm. hear a word that they they like and they get the they understand the general concept of and like that's good enough. I'm gonna throw around this buzzword uh, to support my ideas, even if the principles behind them do not support anything I'm saying. It doesn't matter. It it sounds nice. It makes me feel smarter. Well, our children are being targeted for pedophilia openly, you know? So, you know, no, I don't want to give a platform to that lifestyle. Here's and those the, are your people. Here's the thing. There is... Go ahead, Blair, sorry. Okay, there is... And I think this maybe is something that you might not be aware of or people who are not, you know, closer to the LGBT community and knowing the inner workings, that that's actually a huge divide from people who... It doesn't so, matter. It's a package well, deal. It all comes together. Ah, oh, we're, right. we're all the same. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're all the same. Well, I mean, the LGBTQ we're all a hive, we're, we're all a hive mind, are we, Lauren? <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah. And shows how much uh, you know apparently... About the, shows, shows how much you know about the LGBTQ community. For instance, my, yeah. the vast majority of us despise fucking Blair White. Yeah? Yeah. She does not represent our views. It's a great Most of the time, that, yeah. Uh, there's a huge divide within the community as from people who do support things like Drag Queen Story Hour, one of the things I've been very vocal against. Yes, you have, haven't you, Blair? And you made a video where you posted up a picture uh, accusing uh, uh, th th that drag queen of being a, uh, of, of being a uh, pedophile. Turned out that that wasn't actually the, the correct um, person you were, were, were accusing. Yeah, yeah, yet again. Wait, are you saying that Blair lies? Yes, I am. What? Yeah, I don't know. Um, again, short term transitioning. So I don't think it's a monolith. I don't think any group is a monolith. The same way that people, the, the right wing is not a monolith of just people who believe, you know, in a biblical, you know, definition of conservatism and people who don't. Um, and I think that there's a really big missed opportunity for the right in the sense that I think. LGBT people are actually the best warriors against gender ideology and, you know, and seeing and seeing children being read to by half naked drag queens. And they're not what? fucking half naked. Yeah, they're, what they're the, not. What the fuck? Blair? You're fucking now enabling fucking, Laura, you know, Lauren there who would like gladly you know, put you on a kettle truck and trip you off to the fucking gas chambers. You really are a dumb fucking cunt, aren't you? And, and children going under hormone therapy at 12. I think... No! No kids are going on fucking hormone therapy at the age of 12. Puberty blockers are not hormone therapy. Yeah. That people that are from that community coming and speaking out against it do a lot more, a, a lot better of a job at trying to stop it than people who are on the outside. Because at the end of the day, um, Lauren, you could make it part of your platform to be against those things. And even Carlin, you guys could talk about it. But it's never, it's simply the way it works. It's never going to be heard as loud as someone like myself or a gay person coming out of the community. And so I think that when you have, I would venture to say, the majority of LGBT people who disagree with those things, when they feel like they can't speak out against it, because what happens is the right will Silent say, okay, majority. <laughs> Yeah, and there's plenty. It's who always do. the silent majority uh, uh, mm. narrative, and and as and yeah. as it as it goes, Blair, you never fucking shut up. India Willoughby <clears throat> never shuts a fuck up. Rosa Dawn never shuts a fuck up. You know? and you yeah. you are fucking heard. We hear you, and we don't like what you. Yeah, have more people say. hear hear Blair White than than hear me, which is a shame because my ego is just hurt by this as I'm not a, a, as popular of a, uh, a trans woman as Blair White and um, uh, basically give me millions of subscribers, okay? <laughs> you got against it, but you still get no voice in the party. You're still disgusting. You're still a freak. They don't want to, then they end up staying on the left and it makes it appear as though all of us agree with those things. But in reality, Oftentimes we feel politically homeless, like we don't have a voice over here, and we have to pretend to be leftists or pretend to be along with these things because we don't have a, a political home. Well, so absolutely. again, I think. Well, so I just want to one second, just one last yeah. thing. So again, I think just in general, the overall point of what I think is that you don't benefit from turning people off from voting for you. You just don't. 
Okay, if I was a GOP strategist, I would probably, you know, say that Blair's right. However, I'm not a GOP strategist. Um, I want the GOP to die. And, um, uh, you know, so follow Lauren's lead and John's lead. Yeah. You know, go, go down the fascist, go, go down the, fa the, the, the fascist route. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know. No. Just so long as you don't okay. go full well, accelerationist and... and well, as long as you don't usurp power, as long as as long as you know you don't have a another capital right which is actually successful, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. Listen, here's the deal: your whole lifestyle really opens the door to everything that you claim to stand against. Now, I'm not really sure if you really stand against the transitioning of children or tra drag queen story hour, or if it's just I public opinion. Or if, public, or if public opinion is against you because... Oh, you can't trust Blair. She's, she has a nefarious agenda. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that's... that's. I mean, the other thing is... The thing that she can't deal with is the idea of uh, uh, a trans person agreeing with her, and she cannot cope with it so therefore Blair White must not actually agree with her <laughs> public opinion matters you know I don't really know what's really in your heart but when you walk out a lifestyle that introduces that to children I mean it's there it is your people it is part of you know that's part of the package deal it is spearheaded by the LGBTQ movement just because you take a normal stance on something, everybody should be opposed to grown men going into the young girls' locker rooms or bathrooms. You know, every it's, that doesn't make you special. It makes you normal. You know, and just because you dress up as a woman... Right. Okay. The vast majority of people don't give a shit about trans women going into female toilets. Okay? Um, oftentimes, to give a shit. Yeah. That's so, not true. It's so, I mean, piss. You piss. Have to piss more than you have to shed, just generally. But anyway, sorry. Yeah, that's true. Um, the, uh, the the point I'm making is is what's normal is that people want trans people to have equality. Survey after fucking survey says so, right? And it is only yeah. Well, what 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 happens to be common is. It's only a small... If you want to talk yeah. about the silent majority, the silent majority support fucking trans people. It's only a small yeah. minority of transphobes who are very vocal who, who get hurt. Okay? Yeah. <clears throat> does not mean that you have a special opinion on something that everybody should oppose. Okay, so... I, I'm so... not claiming to be special. I'm just a person that shares my opinions online. And what I'm just trying to tell you is that it's a lot more people than you think within the community, the LGBT community, that agree with me and think the exact same way, you, not the exact same way, but on the more radical ideas like children, everything to do with children. Um, it's all the same. I mean, you can sit here and you can insist that it's a monolith and insist that we all think that way and that it is a package deal, but it's really not, especially considering gender ideology and, and how it has manifested now and taken over culture and been popularized. It started a lot long, it started well after the existence and acknowledgement of gay people or transgender people. Transgenderism used to be a purely medical issue. Transgenderism. Yeah. Um... And as it goes, Blair, non-binary people have been around as long as trans people have. Okay? Yeah? Yeah. Um, so... One might say non-binary people are are also trans. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but the point the point is this wasn't you know non-binary people weren't invented on some lib, uh, uh, you know university uh, li liberal universities campus okay yeah on a purely medical basis gender ideology that we see on college campuses and that oftentimes it's communists spreading it that came oh much much later oh, oh god god 
Yep. Red all, Here we go. All the Jewish Bolsheviks spe- uh, spreading this horrible ideology. So, I mean, I know that she's going with the, the more modern terminology of um, cultural Marxists, but let's be honest, it's just a continuation of Jewish Bolshevism, yeah. uh, uh, that conspiracy theory about Jews changing the culture to try to destroy the the white race or whatever so if i th- i don't i think that they are two separate things okay so let me let me let me uh i have to move the conversation on because i know that blair again has a hard out and so i kind of want to give carlin and, and john a chance to respond to this so as we're wrapping this up with the big tent with the idea of the place with gays i i don't want to get your opinion wrong lauren so i'm just if you can give me a brief response to this do you do you believe that we should exclude let me give you an, uh, another opportunity to smell off your fascist bullshit well i mean the only person I think it's who's pretty, not pretty, spouting fascist bullshit is the person on the top left yeah the the, the i think it's pretty fucking clear where lauren stands on this <laughs> yeah the lgbt influence he's 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 loving giving her a platform yeah and it's not necessarily that he agrees with her i have to say he knew that this would get them attention yeah because i mean everybody has responded to this um it's from the right wing and reestablish sort of like a christian party can you give me your summary in under a minute yeah so uh certainly in conclusion uh the lgbtq community has no platform should have no influence on the party that was based on traditional marriage opposing gay marriage still is our platform that hasn't changed but we are going to have to vote on it again soon you know are we going to be the party moving forward are we going to be the party that compromises on our values uh, that got us this far or are we going to stand firm on issues like family restoring the nuclear family getting dads back into the home uh re-legalizing conversion therapy which they have stripped parental oh so you also believe in torturing lgbtq people yeah how lovely not yeah yeah mm. all right maybe, sh- maybe you could become a spokesperson for milo's um conversion therapy clinic <laughs> yeah i mean um i've heard that milo has <laughs> apparently uh you know his his husband is now his uh, housekeeper, and there's definitely no mm. sex going on there. Housemate. And <laughs> housemate, not housekeeper. No, ex gay. The house, mm-hmm. not housekeeper, housemate. Oh, sorry, housemate. Yeah, don't get Milo wrong! <laughs> <laughs> Children now can't even go to get therapy if they choose to change their mind while struggling with gender dysphoria. You know, the only path forward with this with this lgbtq agenda is stripping parents of their rights parents are being villainized for not wanting to transition their children they're getting their they're having their children take uh well my darling it's a form of child abuse to prevent the child from being themselves okay yeah taken away from them you know so it is not a lifestyle that should be included um, in the Republican Party. And it's not something we need either. Electorally, it hurts us. Okay. Lauren, and then uh, Carlin, let me give you, so if, in under a minute, can you wrap up your conclusion on this as well? Yeah, this is about attracting as many people to the movement as we possibly can. I would like everyone who believes in freedom of speech, who believes in protecting the Second Amendment, who believes in protecting all our individual liberties to come to the movement. And I think it's rather ironic that people like Lauren talk about treasuring the traditional family when she was campaigning on Twitter to have my husband of almost 10 years supported. So protecting the traditional family, but break up mine. I would like to welcome... That's a good point. Well, yeah, I know. That's the thing. She is actually um, making some good points, uh, especially when she is personally attacked by a a horrible bitch who doesn't believe in Christianity, but likes to say that she's Christian. Everyone into this movement, including my husband, who will be starting the process of becoming a U.S. citizen a little later on this year. And when he does... When he does, he will be voting in the MAGA movement, just like me. Well, then he's really fucking stupid. Because the MAGA movement has people like Lauren. Yeah. 
John? Uh, I, I think that Lauren summarizes it pretty well. We're not saying that we're going to turn these people away. We're just saying that their issues can't be represented in our party platform because their issues fundamentally represent something that is deviant from the traditional American society. <sighs> Cultural Marxism again. Yeah. And who are you to, to arbitrate what is the traditional American values? Yeah? Who the fuck are you to say what, what are traditional American values? Well, what they mean by tra traditional American values is uh, traditional... They mean what... White, yeah, conservative... Uh, Christian. Uh, Christian values that were the Christian values from the 1930s combined with the social policies of the 1850s mm -hmm. in a nice interesting mesh is what they're going for and these allusions to the constitution as though it's an argument about about religion I think is kind of disingenuous because like I said earlier Lauren I, I think I mean speaking for myself I was against these sort of issues before I really came to the faith. But I think it's important to put that into context uh, that like when the Constitution was written, you know, you mentioned the First Amendment and the Second Amendment, even the founding fathers like Thomas Jefferson, who would now be considered to be like the most radically pro freedom of the founding fathers. When he was governor of Virginia, he wanted the punishment for sodomy to be the equivalent to the punishment for uh, punishment for rape because he the, we are talking about the 18th century. OK, yeah, but but those values are super important. And yeah, one might argue that we changed. Oh, of them course, of course, of course, for ethical uh, reasons. Of course, but... of course, uh, you know that they, they all shout seventeen seventy six. All right, okay. So you want to? All right. Well, let's go back to seventeen seventy six when when you know we, we, women you know didn't have to vote. You know, basically they were you know housebound. They couldn't go out without you know fucking dress. You know, if, if their dress you know showed their fucking ankles, they would be called a fucking harlot. You know, bloody 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 blah. Is that, is that yeah, what you want to? Want to, want to, say, to, you know, you want slavery back? Actually, you'd probably be okay with that, you know? Well, uh, um, you they, know, uh, um, you know, you know, fuck medical science. Let, yeah, let's, let's have the, let, let's have, um, uh, typhoid back. Yeah. You know, never mind well, I mean, COVID-19, never mind about fucking COVID-19. <laughs> you know, cholera and typhoid. You know, you, you want to, you want to resurrect 1776? Yeah, let's, let's go ahead. Yeah. Not. Well, they, they say they want to resurrect 1776, but when it comes to actions, they prefer to resurrect oh, 1810. Oh, 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 but, but, 17... You know, when the Capitol oh, but, but, was burned down in, in 1810. It was 1812. Uh, 17... 1812, sorry. I was uh, off by a couple of years. 1776. The only thing about 1776 is you wouldn't be able to have your AR-15. You'd have to have muskets. Yeah, These but what about the, the semi-automatic muskets? Against no, the, went against the social fabric of the nation and the moral fabric of the nation. So if you want to come vote for Republicans nominally, that's great. But you can't have your issues represented because all of your issues, whether that be uh, two men getting married or it's just like it all represents something that is the total enshrinement of equality, which is fundamentally a left wing idea. And it always has. Oh, you, you, you see, here's the thing, right? Look at you look at John and you think, yeah, he'd do well in the law of the jungle, wouldn't he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's all for for the survival. <laughs> so, you see, this is this is the problem, particularly with some libertarians I've known, right? Because they're they're all for the law of the jungle, survival of the fittest, you know. And I would go so far even even, even to include Aria in, in this, right? But they seem to think they'll be okay, right? No, you fucking would wouldn't, okay? You wouldn't, right? Um, yeah, but I mean, I mean, um, shit. There's something I was gonna say uh, uh, about. Shit, I lost my train of thought. Whatever. And then Blair, uh, give us your conclusion. I guess my conclusion would be that this is all oh, I remember. kind of silly. Okay, so I'm good. I I support you voting for us, but I won't vote for. I won't. I I don't think we should fight for any issue that you care about. Well, then you're not going to get fucking votes. That's not how voting works. People vote for candidates who are fighting for policies that they care about. And if you don't want the conservative movement to fight for policies that people care about, then yeah, you are going to lose votes. You have yeah, half sorry. the country unconstitutionally locked down, people dying alone right now, can't go to funerals, um, oh, people God. out of work. Like, 
the entirety of the country living with almost no dignity out of all of a sudden we have lockdowns and just so much stuff to worry about. We're bombing Syria, you know. Um, um, Trump bombed Syria as well, you know. Yeah. yeah, and honestly, the whole... So everything about this uh, lockdown narrative about worrying about, uh, uh, you know, loved ones dying alone or whatnot... A lot of this reminds me of um, the documentary about Chernobyl, where that one woman sneaks in and um, uh, ends up with um, uh, a miscarriage due to the fact, the, like the only reason she survived was because she was uh, pregnant or whatnot and, and got a miscarriage from the um, radiation poisoning because she didn't want her husband to die alone and she didn't care, uh, care about the consequences and all of it. I just, I can't stop thinking about that. Cause it's just like horribly dumb. And that was like true events. And the fact that nothing has changed is just, yeah. I just can't, I can't wrap my head around this being even remotely close to the most important conversation happening on the right or anywhere. Um, and I think that it's also kind of just over. Um, I guess I'm just kind of saying what I've already said before, but um, Trumpism is the future and Trumpism isn't, unfortunately, what you've seen with, with Lauren and with John today. Um, and they're certainly free to advocate for um, an increase or a rise in social conservatism. But speaking for um, a really big chunk of my generation, which are going to be the people running things very soon, and they already are, um, you know, what Carlin said earlier about we grew up in a time where we were very, very turned off in social conservatism and a lot of the more radical ideas that, True. that you're seeing now um, in regards to gender ideology, wokeness, it is the pendulum effect of social conservatism. It is. It, it was, you know, I grew up in a time where when I was five years old, I was naturally feminine getting beat up by little Christian kids in my school. And um, All right, so she does remember what it's like to have gender dysphoria when she was a kid. Yeah, but uh, like I said, the the self reflection, uh, she doesn't have the self reflection to process that and and actually arrive at the natural conclusions too. That was kind of the era that we were in, and things changed, and people got disgusted with that. And the pendulum is now to the point where now you have people being disgusted with the opposite end. So, um, I guess. Big Ten Party is the future. Not a huge tent. You don't have to compromise on everything, but right. you do have to acknowledge the anomalies in people and that everyone's different. And if you're going to be searching for, you know, pure, perfect, ideologically consistent 100% of the time people to only be part of your movement, you're not really going to find many of them. Okay. Especially because a lot of these social conservatives on Twitter that, that, you know, love to talk about LGBT people being excluded, um, a lot of them are secretly gay behind the scenes. All right, so. well, I got to cut you. That's true. Right, so that is essentially t nearly two hours of my life I'm not going to get back. <laughs> yes, but it's a wonderful two hours of hateful speech yeah, well, I'm, 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 the, I'm, I'm, the I'm, most I'm, horrible people uh, you could find online. Yeah, well, you know, Lauren Witzke and John Doyle, um, you know, are the true voice of the fucking Republican Party, um, you know, Laird certainly doesn't belong in the Republican Party, and and um, as for C C Carolyn, uh, you know, what the fuck? You know, she says she's a liberal. The fucking Republican Party. Yeah, I I don't even know what's going on with with her. Well, as I um, said, she's awkward, bitch, isn't she? You know, there always has to be one, yeah. doesn't there? You know. Yeah. <laughs> um. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I mean, Blair White has, um, uh, at the very least, has the self hatred talking points down. Right, okay, uh, let me have a... F uh, right, um, sorry, I've been... Uh, this must be the longest stream we've done so far. Um, well, let me have a look... Oh, at shit! What? Sorry, I, I just looked at... How sorry, I was enjoying being on this stream. <laughs> Start... Um, uh, yeah, um, I'm just looking at the chat before I go. Uh... To go, um, I, I got your point, but most people have have to go with, with what religion their parents 
uh, passed uh, down, I'd say. Uh, not true. You know, how many people um, do you know who are atheists? Right? I mean... And, and how the, many of... The and, and, how I, many, and, I how, and how many of those atheists were born into Christian families? Or Jewish families, in the case of me and Osma? Yeah, but, like, um, when it comes to statistically, I... Uh, I can't remember for sure the statistics on how likely you are to be a part of the same religion that your your uh, family is, at least in terms of um, uh, what religion you declare. But yeah, yeah. Freya is absolutely right. Yes, um, nobody's stopping uh, Lauren saying what she wants to uh, wants to in public, but private companies have the right to refuse service. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And, you know, isn't it funny how, um, you know, we used to be told um, by conservatives that, you know, shops and other services had the right to, refu uh, to refuse uh, to serve um, uh, 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 LGBTQ people. And then all of a sudden, when private companies say, uh, no, we're not going to give you a platform, they all suddenly start whining. And in some cases, with the likes of Paul uh, uh, Pajama Watson, you know, someone who said capitalism was brilliant, or, or no, it was capitalism was awesome, um, is now uh, advocating that uh, Twitter and Facebook, uh, which he's been, well, I think he's been banned from Facebook, I don't know about Twitter, but um, I know that his boss, Alex Jones, has been banned from, from both, um, is now, now, you know, arguing that, uh, you know, um, Twitter and, and, and Facebook and other social uh, media platforms are treated as public utilities. Oh, you mean treated as, you know, in the light, uh, the, the way socialists might treat them? Hmm, funny that. Um, anyway. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, okay, so if you like this video, please give it a like. Uh, please share it with your friends. Come on, we've put in a lot of hard work tonight. Um, please, please put the word about. Um, if you got any feedback, then please leave a comment down below. Um, and most important of all, please subscribe. Um, you know, yes. um, every subscriber is valuable to me at the moment. Um, so please, well, please. I mean, I mean, arguably to some degree, that should always be the case. To, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, of course. Um, but I'm saying as, as I'm trying to get to a thousand. Yeah, no, I, I know you. Uh, you're more likely to be able to respond to everyone who comments. Yeah. Um, you you can so, you know, leave comments because uh, there will mm. be responses to them. Possibly, unless they're fucking trolls. Um, well, yeah, unless they're fucking trolls or people trying to uh, sell shit. Um, like yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Um. Anyway, Osma's social media links are down below. Um, she... Yeah, check out the... I'm, I'm oftentimes on the Fluid Voice channel, so you can check me out there. Yes, and you, you'll be presenting... What was your new show called? Um, uh, uh, she can't, even, she can't even fucking remember what her new show's called. No, I said it. Rainbow Shelter News. Right, yes. You'll be... You'll, you'll it just be... took me a second. Shut up. I didn't... I didn't... I never get enough sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm only teasing with that. Yes, please check that out. Uh, you, you, you'll be live tomorrow night, won't you? Um, yes. Well, tomorrow night, uh, uh, British, uh, uh, UK time. Yeah, it's um, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I will be back live tomorrow at 8 p.m. Uh, with my other half. Uh, Kim Justice. Um, yeah, we'll be talking about um, Weatherspoon's Master Chef and the Police State. Um, in the meantime, please take care of, of yourself, stay safe, and well, peace out. Bye.